three, two, one. Admit all. There, there, everybody. Look at all these people. Boy, this is amazing. Do I have my microphone on? I guess I do. I think I'm going to. Hello, everybody. I better go get my um, earphone. I'm, re I'm requesting one minute. Hi, Leah. Hi, Tom. Hello, Jimmy Woods. How long, how long did you stay on last night? Uh, Ronnie <laughs> stayed on with uh, until 3.30. I I left at I left at three. I said, "This is it." I'm sorry. I was too exhausted. And what's the news? What happened? I have no idea what happened after three. No, I mean until up until three. Is are there? Oh, we were doing endorsements for all of LA County. Anybody who wants to talk, sign in with the uh, the uh, chat. Say stack and put your name. Did anyone besides Yasmin get endorsed for uh, Culver City? You're not? I better read all. She's been endorsed by the LACDC, CDP. Anyone else? Yeah, Kelly. Yay. There's Kelly. And, uh, we got 32 people. Oh, I don't have my speaker ah, on. It works. <laughs> that is great, Kareem. How come my thing didn't go in? Did you want to write stack? I'm trying to, yeah. I don't know how to do it. You push chat. You see chat at the bottom? I did chat. I put Tom and Ronnie separately and then stack. And then I hit uh, enter and it's not going up. Ah, there, finally. It's one. there. Yeah. Okay. I think the problem was because of this the new consolidated elections. Mm -hmm. We had almost 200 people in LA County seeking the endorsement of the county committee. Right. So that's why that's... it took a long time. Yeah. We have to do two days next time or something, not one. Well, we're <laughs> having the same problem in this meeting. We have all the propositions and like, you know, all, there's so many people running for city council, so many people running for school board. So hard. But the good thing is we have the ballot the balloting program that to vote on the to vote to, to vote for endorsements mm -hmm. so we don't have to do it in the meeting yeah for but, this meeting yes absolutely mm -hmm. that'll help i hope i think i hope to <laughs> if we haven't done it yet. i immediately knew when they did the consolidated elections there would be too many people on the ballot and it was going to yeah. do something Okay. Okay. Hi, Ken Ken. Hi, Jimmy. Congratulations. You got endorsed last night. Thank you. Thanks for the confirmation. Thanks to you, Tom, and let's see who's uh oh um, and Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie, thank you. Yeah, she's the one who uh texted to me and said, Oh, <laughs> so far so good. Thank you. Thank you guys. Whew. Wow. So <laughs> <laughs> such what a relief. Um, so was the third position still a no endorsement vote? Yeah, no consensus. Yes. No okay. consensus. We didn't have anybody. All right. Whew, I'm so honored. Thank you so much, guys. You're awesome. You're, you're just awesome. Thank you. Well, we all remembered your work. Oh, thank you. In the club. <laughs> 26 Pres President twice. <laughs> yeah. 2016 to 2017. Whew. That was some heavy lifting during those days. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And so are you, how are you guys doing otherwise? Oh, great. 
Everybody's doing great. I am. Ronnie's catching up on sleep. Three o'clock. <laughs> well, what what did you say about Ronnie? She's catching up on sleep. It went until three thirty a.m. Oh my goodness! Wow. Whew. And I wonder if they finished at three thirty. <laughs> I, I think they so did. They, I hope so. Oh my God! It was just because at three o'clock they had just finished the consensus calendar and all the pulls, and they were getting ready to go into the propositions and all the city measures, which there are a ton of them. Oh my God, it's crazy. Uh, it went through the county measures uh, as well, I'm sure. Yes, the city, county, mm -hmm. whatever the ADs had recommended or not recommended, mm -hmm. they had to go through all of those, and then the statewide <coughs> propositions. Yeah. So you saw our uh, um, ballot measure, um, I guess, B and T E. You saw those two from us? You know, I it, no, they didn't come up when I was there. I left at 3 o'clock. Oh. <coughs> and they had not come up. I was just too exhausted to stay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm sure that I don't, I haven't heard. Now that I, I didn't have, uh, today, I'm like, Ronnie, I was sleeping trying to catch up. <laughs> and then this morning, we had Gwen Moore's funeral, you know, a memorial. So I had to get up for that. And that was, uh, but it was on virtual, not on, I didn't go to the real thing. Oh, I'm on here, but they can't see me. When more passed away? Yes. It's all oh dark. Mm -hmm. Like maybe two, two weeks ago, three weeks oh, no. ago. Oh. And they had the memorial for her to, and the burial today. I didn't hear. Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Amy. Yeah, Hi there. Was, how are you? She was our assembly member for many years. <laughs> she, she oh, they could see me. Wow. Hi, yeah. Amy. We can. Yeah, we can see you. Can see you. you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There will be with us in a little bit. Okay. Oh, hi, Pat. <laughs> Good to see you. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, hi, Diane. Yeah. You guys are all here. Fantastic. <clears throat> Hi, Carlene. <laughs> Hi, Honest Buck. I'll be right back. <laughs> I love your background, Kareem. What was the meeting you guys were at until three last night? Was that the city council? It was the Los Angeles County Democratic Party endorsement meeting. Everybody is nice and quiet. Very unusual. Looks like it's an important meeting. Yeah. How did you get that background uh, like that? Wow. Isn't it nice to know that our president has uh, lied to us? Uh, that uh, he, he knew exactly how bad the virus was? Yeah. 
Surprise, surprise. Only the one of a thousand lies he's done. It's just what getting... What is Gina? Gina's yeah. not here, huh? But, but this lie killed tens of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands. She is. I'll be able to say hundreds in a, in a few days. Because I think it's up to 191,000 right now. Well, <laughs> if you count the uncounted, we're well over 200 now. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have our first speaker? Ah, May Gates. Oh, Megan's here. I just saw Megan Sally Wells. Anybody watch Chris Cuomo last night? I'll bring it up later. It's an interesting concept of why he thinks Trump could still win. Mm. Out of fear, essentially. And Bernie says that if Biden wins Texas, there is no way Trump can win. And Biden is one, po one point ahead in Texas right now. Hmm. Where's May Gates? Ooh. She is Sydney's, uh, she works for Sydney. She's Sydney's campaign manager. Um, okay. I have a good story for you. My brother's in Texas, and a few weeks ago, I mean, there were all kind of Trump signs on the lawns. He says they're all down now. So we're wondering, is that positive? What does that mean? <laughs> but they've taken the signs out of their yards. I said, I, I'm going to be positive and think that means we're not voting for him now. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And did anybody hear the story of why the four boats in the Trump parade um, were capsized in Texas? There was a New York Times article about it, but I never found out if there was foul play involved. Uh, why those boats? Yeah, I just let him in. Mm -hmm. I, heard I had read that they capsized because there were so many boats in the water at the same time that the wake from the, the boats of first boats created a, a terrible wake for the other boats. And that's why they say, Another disaster for Trump. Well, they're all considerate of each other's boats, and that's what happened. <laughs> it's the perfect metaphor. Okay. Two people in waiting room. Hey, Carlo. <laughs> Hey, neighbor. <laughs> who, who are we waiting for? Um, Gina. We're waiting for uh, 7 p.m. when the meeting is supposed to start, but we're also waiting for our first speaker, uh, Isaac, and I'm waiting for uh, two elected politicians, uh, one who is here, Megan Sally Wells, and uh, the other one is um, Sydney Kamlager. Uh, she asked to speak for one minute uh, and then has to go. Um, and I told her she could before our program starts. And uh, then I, uh, Megan Sally Wells has to go and she could speak for a minute after, or maybe Megan, since I she's here, will go first. first. Yeah. Megan, why don't you go at seven o'clock, uh, start your minute. And everybody else, uh, mute your microphones, if you would, so we can, and turn off your video if you, uh, aren't speaking and then we'll save bandwidth that way. And um, this meeting will go along. We'll get it started right at seven o'clock. Megan, here. Gina's here. Okay, good. 
Uh, Gina's going to be handling the stack once we get going into the, the one minute talks. The only one minute talks we're going to do right off the bat are Megan Sally Wells and uh, Sydney Kamlager because they both have to go. And then we're going to have our uh, talk from Isaac about uh, Proposition J, Measure J, that's for the from the county. Um, Megan, are you unmuted? Yes, ready when you are. Uh, it's seven o'clock, so why don't you go ahead? We'll call the program to a, to a beginning here. Well, Good thank order. you, I, Pete. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak at the top of the meeting. I just wanted to say a quick word on the importance of the November election, not just nationally, because we all know that, but what it means locally. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan Sally Wells. I am your city council member, a former mayor, and a proud member of this club. And I'll be finishing my second and final term this December. This club has endorsed to, and helped elect the most diverse and progressive city council in Culver City's history. And we've passed policies that have uplifted those in our community who've traditionally been voiceless with unprecedented protections for renters, critical work on equity and racial justice, and a bold plan to phase out oil drilling in the Inglewood oil field. Let me tell you, there's been pushback. I actually call it trickle down Trump. We've done such a good job locally that a Republican led PAC has formed to defeat our work. We can't afford to go backwards. So to continue the bold progressive leadership in Culver City, we have some champions running for city council who I am proudly endorsing. Yasmin Imani McMorrin. She's done outstanding community organizing with renters. She's been leading racial justice work and is vice chair of our general plan advisory committee. Freddie Puza, formerly on our committee on homelessness and now also doing great work on the general plan advisory committee. And I'm also endorsing Daryl Menthe for city council. For school board, we have our awesome and fearless Dr. Kelly Kent, who was previously endorsed by this club, who's running for reelection and also Paula Amazola. Please vote no on measure B, B is bad bad for seniors, bad for families, and bad for Culver City, and vote yes on Measure RE, which is a progressive real estate tax on mansions and big developers. I want to thank you for all the great work that you do and hope you have a great meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Uh, so Gina is here, and she wanted me to explain how the uh, stack will work when we get to the uh, one minutes. Is uh, oh. May is uh, Sydney Camlogger here yet? Let me know when Sydney gets here. Oh, she just is being admitted. Okay, let me give Sydney uh, a minute since I promised her a minute, and she's going to have to get on a plane tonight. Sydney, are you here? Can you unmute? I see so many faces on the screen. I don't see, it's hard to find. She's her. here. I think she's just working. She just, uh, looks like she's probably trying to unmute herself. Hi, Sydney. Can you unmute? Hi, Sydney. Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm in the airport. Oh, you're at the airport. Okay. <laughs> Keep it to a minute, Sydney. Okay. The, I'm in Sacramento. Climate change is for real. Just look outside your windows. We have got to change this immediately. SB 54 was our big climate bill that didn't get enough votes to pass off the assembly to go back to the Senate. Big blankers. Um, three of my bills actually were passed. One on unemployment insurance to allow caregivers um, who take care of spouses and children to be eligible to get unemployment insurance. Um, and then 2054, which is the Crisis Act, and then AB 1950, which will reform probation and knock down the terms. But we have to push the governor to sign them. We've been told, actually, I had a lot of opposition from their office, and they, they had said that there was a possibility that they wouldn't sign them. So this is super important. You know, we have an eviction moratorium until the end of the year um, on top of, that was an executive order on top of the bill, 3088 which protects folks who are in their homes and protects renters. 
Um, and we were able to get some stimulus money out to folks so people will get an additional $300 um, through our un unemployment. Still dealing with a huge $60 billion roughly deficit, um, but figuring out ways to put the band-aids on and sew up all of the wounds and the holes um, that we, you know, learned about because of COVID. I think that was over a minute and that's it. Thank you, Sydney. Safe Thanks, travels. Sydney. Yeah, have a good flight. Thank you. And, uh, Please fight for, we have got to do climate bills next year that are legit, that are gonna get passed, okay? Tell Gavin okay. I will be we'll at do his door if he doesn't do it. So uh, is Isaac here yet? Do we know? I don't um, think he is. Pete, can I just take a minute to explain yes. the timekeeping and stuff just at the top of the meeting? I just wanted to go over. Um, you guys, I'm an LACDP member and we were on the call. I think I saw Tom and Ronnie here. We were on this crap till 3.30 this morning. Literally, LACDP did not adjourn till 3.30 this morning and we didn't even finish all the non-consensus races. I'm exhausted. I had to be back up at seven. And <laughs> so um, I just want to say um, we're, I'm going to be pretty strict on timekeeping. I really want to wrap this up at nine as much as possible. Um, so I have lovely signs for people who are speaking. Um, I know that uh, Pete, I almost called you Tom, I'm sorry. Uh, Pete had sent out in the email about, you know, we're going to have 30, allow 30, right, uh, people one minute to speak um, when it comes to uh, a candidate or a proposition. I'm going to be timing that with my sign. So you'll see, um, hopefully, if you um, have gallery view, you'll see this. And then you'll see this. And then you'll see done. And that's how we're going to do that. So please be respectful. When you see done, wrap it up, or I'm sure Pete will mute you. Um, Mark Gonzalez has no problem with muting people. So, uh, you know, that was just, that was rather funny too. Um, and then also the stack. So I'm looking at the chat right now. Um, if you want to be put in that list to speak on an endorsement, not an announcement, not a comment, not a, you know, a howdy doody. If you're coming to speak or if you want to speak on an endorsement, um, you know, or a proposition, if you put your name stack in there, I will uh, write down the list. And like I said, the first 30. But the caveat is we're going to do this progressively. We're going to give marginalized groups opportunity to speak. So, um, you know, uh, LBGTQ, Black, you know, people of color, um, women, uh, people who are typically marginalized by this lovely unfair system, um, I'm going to give them some priority. So, um, I am taking a first 30 first come first serve, but I am keeping in mind, um, I want to give, you know, a fair shot to everyone and you only can do this once. So please no repeat it. Okay, I just, like just arrived. Yeah, Isaac I just want to share it at the top of the meeting. So now we can continue on with the program. Okay, Isaac Bryan, can you unmute yourself? Sorry for being late, Pete. And uh, No, I'm glad you're here. You came, you came at exactly the right time, actually. We had a couple no, I, other speakers I, I, ahead of you. Megan, Sally Wells, and uh, Sydney Kamlager. So Isaac, uh, Brian is gonna talk about County uh, Measure J. Man. Why don't you just take it away, Isaac? Yeah. yeah. I put your name in already. Okay, everybody else mute themselves or I'll, I'll just mute everybody here. So this is the, what they're gonna do is G. Okay, let me unmute um, Isaac. Where is Isaac? There you are. Hey, Pete. You're unmuted. Good. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, well, first of all, if, if you've got Assemblywoman Sydney Kamlager on the agenda uh, and Megan Sully Wells, then you have an incredible lineup. And um, I think I will stay, stick around after me to hear those two incredibly powerful women speak. Well, they, uh, they just left because they had to go early. And so you, your timing was just perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Measure J, the Reimagine LA Ballot Initiative. Um, I hope you've all heard of it. Uh, what Reimagine LA does and what Measure J does is it looks to codify the movement and the momentum of this past year as it pertains to criminal justice reform here in the County of Los Angeles. Over the last decade or so, the county has advanced a number of criminal justice policies that have laid the foundation for radical and transformative change. I'm thinking about uh, the decision to close 
two of our county jail facilities. I'm thinking of the decision to uh, launch an office of diversion and reentry. I'm thinking of most recently the endeavor to launch an alternative to incarceration work group that was chaired by Dr. Bob Ross, uh, Onesis Hernandez, who's also my co-chair of this measure, Dr. Kelly Lido Hernandez and others. That alternative to incarceration report, which was released in February, really gave a blueprint and a foundation for the County of Los Angeles on how we could move away from our criminal legal system, which is the largest jailing system in the country, also coincidentally the largest mental health provider in the Western Hemisphere, and instead move uh, folks who need care, who need help, who need support into systems of opportunity uh, and systems of healing rooted in a public health approach. That report, which is available online, was adopted by the County Board of Supervisors uh, with, an, with a resounding uh, an exciting video and a press run, but was not met with the resources needed to implement that freedom dream and that vision that so many of us shared in working on that report. Also for that report, that report brought together system actors, labor partners, community activists, all into a room to think about the world and the system we imagine uh, for folks who need services, who need care, for our houses, brothers and sisters who are currently being swept up by the criminal justice system at, at a costly uh, expenditure to the county. And when the county board adopted that report, what they did was they launched an alternatives to incarceration initiative out of the county CEO's office. But they did not match that initiative with the dollars needed to implement uh, that vision that they had approved and that the community had been fighting for years to get them to think differently, transformatively about the needs that folks who come into contact with law enforcement actually need. So in looking at that, and looking at the movement for Black Lives this year, and looking at the fact that it seems like our Sheriff's Department can't go a week without killing an unarmed Black person, a brown person, poor person, or indigenous person here in LA County, we decided to mobilize. I was out in the streets, a lot of you were out in the streets over this last year. There were more people out in the streets protesting and marching than at any point in American history, even more in the Civil Rights Movement. And one thing I kept hearing is what is the policy demand? What are we marching for? I understand we're angry, but what is the policy demand? And the policy demand is to transform and radically improve the conditions of life for all people in LA County and specifically the conditions of life as it pertains to the relationship between black, brown, indigenous and poor communities and our criminal legal system. We have no problem investing $3 billion every year into a sheriff's department. A sheriff's department that kills more people than any other sheriff's department in the country. We have no problem investing in our jail system. We have no problem investing in systems of harm, but we have a, a big problem in moving resources for care and opportunity. So what we've called for in Measure J is for 10% of unrestricted county revenues to be earmarked for alternatives to incarceration and community development, including affordable housing, including systems of care rooted in a public health approach. In doing that, we carved out a maintenance of effort clause so that the county CEO's office couldn't say, well, we already spend 10% on these things and come up with a creative bucket of county expenditures that they would categorize as alternatives to inca incarceration. This is new measures, uh, new investments in systems that uh, need to be bolstered up and built. It also calls for, uh, because it's unrestricted county revenues, it doesn't touch money that's already going to affordable housing, H dollars. Uh, it doesn't touch a lot of earmarked dollars already. It doesn't touch pensions. It doesn't touch dollars that the county is already earmarking every year. These are discretionary unrestricted revenues that the board can allocate how they choose to, but they have historically chosen not to invest in the things that our communities need the most. What it also does is because it's revenues, it means during a bad economy, there's less revenues to play with. And during a good economy, there are more revenues to play with. I say that because traditionally, I'm not a fan of of ballot box budgeting, and I know many folks aren't, uh, which is why I had a long conversation with Senator Holly Mitchell uh, about what implications this could have on a budget because she's been the chair of our state budget for some time now and nobody knows fiscal responsibility as well as that woman. And she's also not a fan of ballot box budgeting historically. But what she reminded me is that budgets are a statement of our values. And for decades, the county has shown that alternatives to incarceration and community development are not values that they hold, but instead investments in our carceral system, investments in harm and punishment are values that we seem to be holding. And so she supports this measure. 
and so do many, many others who know that this 10% investment is a floor and not a ceiling, that the County Board of Supervisors should always seek to invest in the systems of care that provide opportunity and not in the systems of harm. We know that when we provide more opportunity, when we give folks economic mobility and we provide alternatives to incarceration that allow people to rebuild their lives and to re-enter our economy and to re-enter our society as, as neighbors instead of cycling them in and out of a county jail system where the average hold in the county jail system is only six days. We're disrupting lives, we're disrupting families, we're exacerbating homelessness. And those dollars can be used in better proven models and ways that the county is already doing on a small scale. Those are the kind of values we need to be investing in. And so that's what we've mobilized around for this effort. Last night, we got the endorsement of the LA County Democratic Party. Uh, we've been endorsed by the Black LA Young Democrats. We've been endorsed by the Stonewall Democrats. Uh, we've been endorsed by a number of other Democratic clubs across uh, the county. And I'm here tonight because Culver City is very special to me. Uh, I'm a delegate in the 54th Assembly District. I see Tom, I see Gina, I see a lot of my fellow delegates. Uh, and, and Culver City is, is near and dear uh, to my heart. And I believe that this club uh, and the, the values that this club holds dear are, are similar to the values that we would like to see reflected in our county budget. And so I'm here asking for this club's endorsement as we continue to build out this coalition. I'm asking you to stand with us and mobilize voters to turn out on November uh, 3rd to cast their ballots or next week even, Oct or October 5th, I should say, the first week of October to cast their early ballots. I'm encouraging this club to get involved and to use your voice uh, and to use your uh, incredible uh, platform and, and, and the mobilization of this party in this county is, is I think often rooted and the kind of mobilization that happens at the grassroots in clubs like the Culver City Dim Club. And I've seen what y'all can do when you're behind something. And I'm asking you to stand with me and stand with this coalition for this measure. Because this year has been a hard year for all of us for a number of reasons. But if I have to see any more unarmed black people or anybody else die at the hands of law enforcement because we haven't invested in the community infrastructures that provide opportunities so folks don't come into conflict with the law, particularly uh, when we know that conflict with the law intersects with race and poverty at such a high degree, and we can change that, this is an opportunity to change that. And I'm hoping that I, I get your support tonight. Uh, and either way, I'm just proud to be here with all of you. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Isaac. Anybody have any questions for Isaac? Raise your little blue hand and we'll see if we can do it that way. Um, Deborah Weimer, I'm, I'm admitting people as we speak. We have 88 people in the meeting, biggest meeting I've ever uh, chaired. Um, thanks for everybody for coming. Anybody have any questions about Measure J for uh, Isaac before we move on? We have our next speaker here and we can yeah, somebody got a. I saw oh, Rick Tuttle. Cynthia. Rick Tuttle has a has a hand up. Has yes. a blue. I see a blue oh, hand. Oh, there he is, Rick. You want to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'd like to agree with our distinguished colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Brian Isaac Brian, who just spoke. Uh, I think he made a very good point, and budget priorities are important, and the agency of which he's speaking, namely the County of Los Angeles who in the California system, it's not true in every part of the country, county's main responsibility is health and welfare. Cities have other, municipalities have other jurisdictions, but specifically the county, it's uh, the 10% threshold is a, is a floor, it's a starting point. And so when we get around, Mr. Chairman, I'm not quite sure what you and the rest of the leadership are doing on tonight, but if this does come up tonight, I urge a yes vote. And if it's possible, somebody around here if necessary i'll do it i should make a motion to make sure no we're, we're, we've got it on our uh, election buddy ballot that's going to be mailed out at nine o'clock tonight it'll be a 24 hour i'm going to uh, call you uh, i'm going to call you about three in the morning and let you explain to me that buddy ballot but uh, point, <laughs> i've been trying to figure it out for the last week thank you mr chairman well let me explain it right now 
Election Buddy is the system that the LACDP and the other Democratic clubs are using. We had a practice vote earlier this year, and everybody's going to get, everybody that we have an email for is going to get the ballot at nine o'clock. It's, it's not a paper ballot. You go online, you click on a link, you go online, and uh, you'll see at the top of the uh, ballot uh, for president, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for vice president, yes or no, or abstain. So we want you to click yes on that so that we get a unanimous vote for Joe and for Kamala. And we're gonna go down the ballot. Sydney Comleger's on there. Uh, all the state propositions, Measure J is on there, the two city propositions, Except B Prop, and R E. Prop 15. Prop 15 is not on there because we endorsed it a couple of months ago at one of our in-person meetings, maybe three months ago. Uh, that's uh, schools and communities first, but all the other state propositions will be on that ballot, as well as the county measure, Measure J, the one that Isaac was just talking about. So we need a 60% vote on that. And uh, we'll get, uh, given this uh, election buddy ballot gives people who can't make the meeting a chance to vote. <clears throat> and we have over 200 members. So we'll see, uh, we, we sent out, I think we have emails for 199 people at this point. So we sent out 199, or we will be sending out 199 ballots tonight at nine o'clock. Election Buddy sends it out and you uh, fill out the ballot. You uh, send it back to them and they count it and send us a report. Thank That's you, how it Mr. works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I, I appreciate that. And I join Mr. Isaac Bryan in urging a yes vote on Jay. Thank you. Yeah, my own uh, uh, ballot uh, choices I uploaded at the beginning of the meeting. You'll find them in the uh, in the chat, so you can see who, how I'm going to vote uh, if anybody's interested. Thank you. Um, and uh, anybody else want to ask any questions about Jay before we move on? Cynthia, oh. you want to unmute yourself? Uh, I'm certainly okay. Yeah. yeah um, um, okay. okay. I. I, 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 I I'm kind of allergic to ballot box balloting myself, being uh, having spent a ridiculous number of years of my life as a municipal government accountant. But um, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't make an exception. Here, here's my question though. The count, four of the county supervisors want put this on the ballot. Of course, they didn't talk to SEIU about it, but uh, it, they, they who felt like it should have been a meet and confer, but okay. Um, so four of them put it on there. So they had the votes. Why don't they tomorrow or at their very next meeting now, 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 now allocate funds for these um, for these programs? I, I, I don't see yeah. why, why, so, why they have to wait. And maybe I'm asking you to read their minds. Uh, and no, that's I don't it's mean a that. it's a well, I definitely can't read their minds. But um, a couple of things come to mind for me. And first, um, there were many outreach attempts to SEIU, specifically 721, right? And, and Bob, I have called Bob a uh, hundred times. Uh, did, I have offered SEIU 721 a, a seat on the steering committee of this coalition to ensure that any implementation results in more union jobs rooted in opportunity and care. Uh, and SEIU 2015 understands that. Uh, which is why they are not in opposition and not aligned with the sheriff's department, the district attorney's office, and many others who are pushing uh, the opposition campaign. So I will just leave that where that is uh, because I love a lot of folks in 721 and across uh, my labor family. The Board of Supervisors, I think historically, uh, was moved by this moment in the same way we all have been. And I think the four to one vote has come after a lot of the budget conversations and the fiscal planning for the next year was already well underway. I also know that the board carving out a permanent allocation like that uh, is not something that any one standing board would like to do. And, but they recognize the need to do it and the importance of this moment, which is why they allowed for this to, to be on the no November ballot. And quite frankly, they trust uh, the voters, and I do too, of the County of Los Angeles to make that decision for ourselves. And so I think that's why ultimately they did it. Um, and I, I, like you, wish they had had the courage to allocate funds these ways 
uh, some of them for the last 12 years uh, and others for, you know, a little bit less than that. And I'm optimistic that uh, at least one of the candidates running to fill a vacancy uh, believes that money should go this way and that it should be even more than this 10% statement of values that this measure is pushing for. Thanks, Isaac. Okay, I think we're going to get ready for our next speaker. If uh, nobody has any more questions, anybody else have a question? Okay, I really would like to thank you, Isaac. Uh, I'm going to vote for Jay on the ballot, and I urge everybody else to. Um, thank you, Pete. And I just wanted to, to give a shout out to Mr. Tuttle because uh, he was one of my favorite people to see around campus back when I used to walk around UCLA. All right. Thanks a lot, Isaac. And Scott Seiden, um, you're up. Uh, or or uh, Adam Seiden. Yeah. Sorry. I got your name wrong. I'm sorry. Hey. You got your uh, last name right. That's right. Hi, yeah. hi Adam. Hello. Hello, everybody. So, Adam, we had a, uh, a talk uh, at our last meeting from Kelly about uh, Kelly Kent about uh, opposition to. Uh, Proposition 19, and uh, Adam's going to give us the pro uh, Proposition 19 pitch. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to present. Um, I'll give a quick overview about Prop 19, how it works, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to, to answer those uh, at the end if you'd like. So Prop 19 has two key elements to it. Uh, first, it allows seniors, uh, people with disabilities, and uh, wildlife uh, wildfire victims, more flexibility to afford moving closer to their family or medical care. Often seniors are stuck uh, in a house they bought decades ago because they can't afford to lose the Prop 13 uh, tax rate they're paying. Someone bought a house in LA in the 70s or 80s that made sense while they were you know, growing a family, but now their kids and their family have moved out to the Inland Empire. Many seniors just can't afford the tax increase it would take to move out to join them to closer. So unlike current law, Prop 19, Prop 19 allows seniors to take the tax base with them anywhere in the state. Uh, the geographic flexibility is especially important when you know, a community uh, is burned in a wildfire and there are no replacement homes uh, in the area. They're, they're impossible to find. You have to be able to look somewhere else than in, in your uh, home county. Now, at the same time it does that, Prop 19 closes a major tax loophole. Uh, currently, when you inherit a property from a parent or a grandparent, you get to keep the low taxes uh, with them as well, even if you use that uh, property as a rental property. So we end up with these huge Malibu Beach estates uh, renting out for tens of thousands of dollars a month while property owners are paying taxes from the 70s. And that accumulation of wealth wasn't what the intention of Prop 13 was. It was supposed to be about you know, giving homeowners a stable tax rate to plan on and protecting seniors from getting priced out of a house that they already own. Um, so what Prop 19 does is it says you can only inherit those lower taxes if you uh, use the, primary, the, the place as a primary residence. Uh, and doing so, we're unlocking hundreds of millions of dollars um, in unclaimed uh, property taxes to, that will go to local schools, local communities, and will uh, help to support severely underfunded uh, fire districts. So this combination of factors is the reason why the measure is receiving widespread support, including from the California Democratic Party, the State Federation of Labor, and the Congress of California Seniors. Now I know, um, you know, as we heard, I know there was a op-ed done um, uh, that, was, that ran in your, your paper um, that you know, some people start off against the measure because uh, the realtors are the ones who put the um, push to get it on the ballot. And I get that initial reaction. Um, there are many things realtors push that I wouldn't have any part of promoting. Um, and to be honest, of course, the, the realtors, like they do have an incentive to see the pass. If this helps uh, somebody, it makes it easier for someone to sell a home they're in and buy a house somewhere else in the state, less two home sales that wouldn't have happened, you know, two sets of commissions that wouldn't have happened. Um, and so I get like, you know, why they have that financial incentive. but that doesn't make Prop 19 a bad thing. So remember, whoever buys the house that the person just left now has to pay the higher taxes at today's home value. And if a senior decides to you know, upgrade to a more expensive home, they have to start paying additional taxes on any increased value instead of continuing just to pay you know, at the same lower rate. So there's a reason why the only organized opposition to the measure is the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, 
they know it's going to overall increase revenues for schools and local communities. For me personally, though, the reason I like working on this campaign so much is how well it dovetails with um, the fight to promote uh, uh, to pass schools and communities first. Uh, Prop 15 tackles the loopholes on the commercial side of Prop 13, while our measure Prop 19 closes down the excesses on the residential side. Um, at the same time, Prop 19 strengthens the original purpose, the true purpose of Prop 13, which was to protect seniors in their home ownership. So I hope that Culver City Democratic Club would join the California Democratic Party, New Frontier Democratic Club, Stowell Democratic Club, the California Young Democrats, the LA County Democratic Party, AFSCME, uh, state firefighters, state federation of labor in supporting Prop 19. Yeah, the, the one question I had when you and I first talked on the phone is, are you confident that this will uh, re re result in more revenue for the state of California? Yeah, yeah. yes, I'm confident that the argument uh, where, the, the place where you see the argument is how much more it will. The, the legislative analyst office is always more conservative and kind of looks at if things are stay exactly the way they are and this one law is the only thing that changes and behavior doesn't change, how much would it be will it increase? And the LAO says it'll increase it, it'll, it'll grow to hundreds of millions of dollars per year. Um, other fiscal analysis I've seen when you've taken the fact that it will kind of cause more people to, to do these things that you see, especially in the, the way the inheritance part of it works, um, it estimates more like, you know, four or five, six billion a year. Um, so, but at the very least, it'll be hundreds of millions of dollars in additional revenue uh, per year. Anybody else have any questions for Adam on uh, Proposition 19? Uh, raise the little blue hand if you do. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. And no uh, stick around for the meeting if you like, or if you have to go. Uh, we really appreciate your coming and, and um, your input on uh, Proposition 19, Adam. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, no thanks a lot. Hey, Rick. Hey, Tom and Ronnie. Good to see everybody. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on to our next program item, which is a report on the Democratic National Convention by our two um, delegates. We have uh, Gina Harris, who was a Bernie Sanders delegate, and Jimmy Woods Gray, who was a Joe Biden delegate. And we've asked them to give us a little five minute uh, uh, talk about uh, Democratic Convention. Who wants to start? Gina, are you there? I am, but I'll let Miss Jimmy go first. Jimmy, Jimmy, you go first. You there? Of course, she's saying no. <laughs> Wait, Miss Jimmy, can you unmute yourself? I want to hear from the newbie. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, this is my second convention. Let me get let me get at least one stripe. <laughs> um, so the DNC, what a what a it was boring. Um, I mean, comparatively speaking to an actual convention where we're running around, we're meeting people, we're talking, you know, we're in person. Um, but as a nurse, I completely agreed with the DNC's decision to make this virtual. Um, I am a Bernie Sanders delegate. I represented the 37th, um, which is, you know, Karen Bass. And, um, you know, it was... Um, it, they, it was an interesting experience. Um, you know, they, everything moved virtual, yeah, I uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom made a lot more money <laughs> because we did everything via Zoom, the caucuses, which were public. So I hope some of you guys did get to join the caucuses and watch the live streams. Um, there were really good conversations about housing. Um, just, you know, shout out to uh, Susie Shannon and the Poverty Council, um, the Black Caucus, the Women's Caucus. Um, the voting uh, voting was done actually before the convention started. We were emailed a ballot um, and very similar to, uh, except it wasn't election buddy, it was like a PDF. So we were emailed a ballot. That ballot was returned on the 15th. Um, so there was like, you know, no live, uh, real live voting going on. Um, I was part of the, the coalition to um, oppose the platform. And so I oppose the platform and I'm not ashamed of it because um, it was not progressive enough. And I know that that is um, saying something to a lot of the Democrats who've been in the party for a long time who know that this that platform has moved progressively to the left, especially in the last four years. But due to the fact that California looks like Australia did last year, and the fact that people are dying due to a pandemic that no one has ever seen, I think that 
we should have been way more aggressive on climate change. Uh, we should have been way more aggressive on healthcare. And I would have liked to see them say Black Lives Matter. Um, so, you know, I voted no, didn't make a big difference. The platform is what it is. It's still, it passed, don't worry about it. Um, but other than that, like I said, it was, um, you know, it was just interesting to see um, I miss the camaraderie. I miss the the <laughs> budding of heads. I miss a lot of the, um, you know, parts that go in, you know, with it being an in-person convention. I also did a um, a show called The Misfit Black Girls with Dallas Fowler and Dina Becker, who are also Bernie delegates, and we gave our own kind of uh, our own commentary to the DNC while the DNC was going on. So if you saw it, thank you for you know, checking in on us. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's basically how it went for me. I mean, you know, talking to uh, journalists who wanted to reach out. Um, I did several panels, um, you know, regarding uh, healthcare and regarding um, the current climate, you know, with uh, the policing and things like that. But every, like I said, everything being done virtually really did put a hamper on things to me. Um, and it kind of dampered the excitement. Like we really needed the, and I'll, I mean, this is my last little point. We needed a lot more energy than I think we had um, to go into this. You know, we really need to motivate people to the polls. Um, the climate has changed when it comes to that, that elephant in the room, the Bernie versus, you know, the Bernie people versus the Biden people or whatever. Um, we are, we all know what we have to do to get it done. This is not 2016. It is far, far worse. Um, but when it comes to non-voters, the ones that actually, you know, was the reason why we actually lost was people just didn't show up. I'm worried that we're still not exciting them enough to go and overcome these barriers to voting that are going to come up in the next couple of months. So I think that we really need to do a better job at exciting people and motivating people to the polls. Um, lastly, the DNC did have better views or better ratings than the RNC. So even with Trump's hour and 10 minute speech, um, the DNC still had the highest ratings with the highest night being Kamala's night. So shout out to her. Um, and, you know, I'm a VP Harris. She's a VP Harris. She's going to be like my cousin. You know, it's all good. I'm just going to go make a room in the White House because um, she's now my cousin. And, uh, you know, that's my recap. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Jimmy, why don't you give uh, your perspective? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the Cover City people who helped to get me there and for the 25 years of support. That's been great. And I've been to the convention many times, so I have many different views of this convention. Uh, but this time, it was very, very different. Um, not seeing all of your friends who you only meet every four years. Um, and not being able to uh, network with people from different parts of the country really made a difference. And I was reminded of that more so when we had our union uh, caucus meetings because the NEA had all of their people come together, the National Education Association, and then the AFT, the American Federation, she said, their own uh, caucus. And so when we saw each other, it was like, oh my God, usually we're giving each other hugs and high fives and whatever. But this time we were like waiting to for permission to speak. Um, the convention I thought in it itself was a, to be virtual was really great. We had the benefit of so many great speakers whom we don't always get to see. And I thought that the speakers were so representative of what we want the Democratic Party in this country to recognize because of the diversity. And you could tell they were really there because they wanted to be there. They weren't just saying something to be saying it. Uh, it really um, made a big difference. Um, the only thing that we did, just as Gina said, as delegates was to vote. Uh, and we did that on, uh, uh, on I think, uh, when it was August the 3rd or something. We did yeah, they really sent early. out the ballots early. Yeah, we got really early. So our job was just about finished. Before the convention started, we were all finished, but we had to figure out what we were going to do because we were delegates. So we had, you know, what else is happening? So then it became the thing of scheduling. We had to schedule everything in because the calendars were really interesting. You had to go online, figure out when all the caucuses were meeting. And just Gina said they had fabulous caucus speakers. Um, and the agenda was really great. 
uh, the labor uh, council spoke about increased raises, benefits for uh, for workers, health care, vacation time, all kinds of things that we felt were really, we would, I'm sure all agree, I know I agreed with the fact that these things were things that working people in this country needed. And then we had uh, every ethnic group basically is recognized by the DNC had a caucus. And then, of course, there was the Poverty Caucus, which had some really fabulous speakers. And we were great, glad, I was glad to see our speaker, our California representatives, well represented among the speakers. Maxine Waters, Karen Bass, uh, different Adam Schiff, different people who were uh, representing California. We had uh, a chance for other people to see how fabulous our representatives were, too. Um, at every convention, people had called me and said, what kind of little things are they giving you? What are they giving you? And I said, oh, what are they giving at you? Well, this is what they gave us this year. This is it. Usually, they're bags. We have bags and bags of stuff to bring home. But we received in the mail a white envelope. And inside of that envelope was a, a credential, a souvenir credential. And we had a little scarf like something. I don't know if this was supposed to be like a backdrop for videos and some pins. And then we had these uh, posters that were uh, from the campaign. Um, a glass of this one was for Joe. And uh, then there was this Dr. B and the Joe. And the, the thing about it is it arrived before Kamala was announced. So in my packet, I didn't get anything with Kamala's name on it, so I was very disappointed in that. Um, but we did get get some things that were of interest, uh, souvenirs, a few to save, I guess. That was enough, actually. Um, but, but the uh, biggest thing for me were the speakers, because we don't always get to see the speakers. Um, and after listening to all the speakers, I felt really confident that the Democratic Party was the place where we could work and we had to make sure we get a change in the White House and make it a Democratic White House so that I can expect great things for my grand great grandchildren who are coming along because the way things are going now, uh, I, I have real concerns. Um, there was also a poster for volunteering. So anybody who wanted to volunteer you can text 30330 and just say volunteer. You can still do that. Text 30330 and say in the subject write volunteer. And they will contact you because this election is not going to be won by a few people, our paid staff. We are going to have to all get out there and work and show how serious this thing is. Um, it's going to take everybody if we're gonna bring about real change. And even after the election's over, hopefully, Biden and Harris will be in the White House. But we'll need to work and continue to organize and make sure that the values that we so believe in are carried out and that this country becomes the country that we want it to be. But I enjoyed the convention. I had a, that, ta that Scheduling was an interesting thing. And also, I became a part of a group called uh, Fireflies, I think, uh, Greenflies. Greenfly. And it was really fun because it's a texting, pro it's a media, social media program. And they selected people to do it. And they sent us um, videos and things to send out throughout the week. And then the following week, during the Republican Park Convention, they sent follow-ups to give the speeches. Every time someone made a speech, then we got a video that was a bragging video, and we would send that out throughout the country. So that was really good, too. I enjoyed that because they kept me busy doing okay, stuff. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up now, Jimmy. Okay. Thank you very much for the time. I did enjoy the convention, and thanks to those people who voted for me. Thank you, Jimmy. Both for Joe and Harris. Uh, just really quick, Pete, I just wanted to say one the coolest thing too, and I know you guys all saw it, was the roll call. I think we should continue to do roll call like that, seeing the roll call from around the country. 
Um, you know, and it's usually in the, con the stadium or wherever we are, but seeing it around the country, I thought was really awesome. And then being featured in DNC commercials was shocking, but you know, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I like that roll call around the country. All right, so I'm gonna let uh, Gina uh, monitor these uh, one minute pitches that people wanna make. Do you have a list there in front of you? Um, to, I oh? do, and we are actually over 30. So I was actually, um, before I stopped to uh, speak, I was um, just going through the first uh, top 30. Uh, so, um, like I said, I see that uh, people are at, I see people still adding their name into stack, but we have met our threshold, so. Um, yeah, we're probably me, not going to let. We've got uh, 89 people on here. We're not going to be able to let everybody speak tonight. But uh, first come, first serve, and uh, we'll let the people who don't get heard very often get up to the front of the line. If you see somebody like that in there, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, but we'll start going down um, now. Really quick, uh, is this including the candidates too? Candidates can get a minute if they're uh, club members, sure. Who okay, because there's, there's quite a few candidates on here as well. So um, I believe uh, Albert, uh, Albert's Albert's iPhone. Member. I'm, yeah, I was like, I'm sure that's Albert Vera. Uh, then we yeah. have Paula Amazola. Um, yeah, we have Yasmin. We have Freddie. Yeah, they're all um, members. That, yeah, they're all in the stack. So I didn't know if you wanted to separate those out uh, since they actually are the candidates. You can you can let them uh, go first if you like. Is that what you were thinking? Uh, yeah, well, start. I mean, because they are the candidates, I thought that yeah. that would be That sounds good to better. me. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with uh, Albert. Albert, you there? Also, um, just like I said before, you know, I'll have signs to show. Um, good when you're running, you know, low on time. Sorry, I'm trying to make multiple screens here. Albert Vera? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to speak today as a candidate for Culver City Council. I'm proud to say that I've been endorsed by Yvonne Burke, Autumn Burke, Herb Wesson, Richard Bloom, and the Young Stonewall Democratic Club. I will assume many of you know my story, both the successes and the failures. I believe Can we that- Can you? Uh, he's on his phone. Oh, sorry. I believe that my life experiences give me a unique foundation for public service. I know not everyone agrees with that assessment. I've heard many times that I am someone who does positive things for the community, but is not sufficiently progressive enough to get your endorsement. Obviously, on a personal level, I wish you look at my candidacy more closely. More importantly, as a lifelong member of the Culver City Democratic Club, I would like you to consider the following. Over the past several decades, the far right of the Republican Party came to believe that their conservative views of the world was 100% right and that there was no room for dissent or discussion. 15 they took seconds. Over, they took over the party and look where they are now. Look at the consequences we are living as a result. The moment we believe our views of the world is 100% right, there is no room for dissent or discussion, good government becomes impossible. No matter how strong we believe the other side holds the... Can I just get a couple seconds because I got interrupted by Tom? I'll just finish up really quick. No long how strong we believe the other side holds the opposite beliefs just as strongly. It is closed minded to think that the only that only side has all the solution. Inclusion is not a weakness. Okay. It is yeah, I need you to wrap goal. it up or I have to give everyone else a minute and a half. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Albert. you, Albert. Uh, go ahead, Gina. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Paula. <clears throat> Hold on for one second. Sorry. I um, had a millennial moment. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, uh, well, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paula Mesola de Herrera. I work at USC. I'm the founder of the Public Health Career Advising for Keck School of Medicine. For our city, I'm the chair of Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. Um, my daughter just started 11th grade this year, and today is her birthday. Happy birthday, baby girl. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting off of here so I can go celebrate her. On her birthday, I hope to encourage all of you to vote for values. My vote is based on the values of equity, inclusion, and diversity. I want you to vote for progressives so that we can treat people in a humane way regardless of legal status, regardless of whether they own or their rent, or regardless of whether they're students who live in Culver City or on permit. So today I ask you to please vote no on measure B. 
for city council, vote for Yasmin McMorin, Freddie Puza, Daryl Menthi. For school board, of course, re-elect Kelly Kent. And for me, uh, I will continue to bring these values. Si se puede, Culver City. Thank you. Um, just, uh, we're gonna take a pause really quick. Um, Pete, so there are other candidates who didn't put their name in the stack, like Ken Kent, or who are that are also members, like Ken Ken, Kelly, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on this. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, with me. so I just wanted to make sure we got, we're okay with that. Um, yeah, yeah. All we're, right, we're okay so uh, next up would be Yasmin. Go ahead, Can Yasmin. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasmin Imani McMorin. Uh, during the day, I serve as the Interim uh, Dean of Students and Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at USC Gould School of Law. And for uh, our lovely city, I serve as the Vice Chair of the General Plan Advisory Committee. And I just wrapped up my service on the Equity Strategic uh, Planning Committee uh, for our school district. Uh, so I guess you guys are probably picking up on the theme here. Uh, equity is at the core of who I am uh, personally and uh, in my work, so I'm very grateful to be aligned in that way. Um, I'm super honored to be running for Culver City Council and also very honored to have the endorsement of five Culver City, or not five Culver City, I would be honored to have the endorsement of, of this club, but have five uh, Democratic clubs in general. And I've also been endorsed by our representative, uh, Karen Bass, our Congresswoman. So I'm incredibly honored for that support. And I would be, uh, again, honored to have the support from this club. Uh, and thank you Hi. so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so then, uh, Sorry, too much going on in my life. Um, we have Freddie, yes. Oh, huh? Freddie, I'm sorry, Freddie's on. <laughs> yes, we have Freddie up um, next. And uh, well, I was just trying to see who else was um, after Freddie. So then Freddie will go Kelly and then we'll go Ken Ken. And then, uh, yeah. Okay, Freddie. Hello, Culver City Democrats. My name is Freddie Puza, lifelong Democrat activist, community member, um, and member of Culver City Democratic Club for many years. I'm dedi I've dedicated my life to fighting for equality and justice. I currently serve on the General Plan Advisory Committee and previously on the Committee on Homelessness. I've been endorsed by three out of the five current city council members, in addition to Stonewall Democrats, Westside Young Democrats, and Equality California. I need you now more than ever. Please vote for me and my fellow true progressive candidates. Uh, if elected the first openly LGBTQ council member in Culver City, I'm not accepting money and endorsements from police unions. I'm committed to reimagining public safety to align with the city's values, expanding mental health resources, protecting renters and their rights, preventing displacement and homelessness, and keeping equity at the center of updating the city's general plan. I will work with our business, community, and elected leaders to ensure every resident is part of our post-pandemic renaissance. Please vote no right. on the key. Thank you so much. Thanks, Freddie. All right. Um, then we have uh, Kelly, and then we'll go Ken Ken, and then Daryl Menthe um, is here, and I believe that will wrap up our candidates. Hi everyone, thank you. I'm Dr. Kelly Kent and I was previously endorsed by this Democratic Club. Thank you so much for my first term. I am through and through committed to equity. I am on a mission to listen to the students and get them involved in decision making. I've been the only board member to fight for environmental sustainability throughout my first term. I have been endorsed by both Congress member Karen Bass and Senator Holly Mitchell. Woo -woo. I've been endorsed by the teachers union here in Culver City, as well as the County Democratic Party. And I really, really would like to ask that you will help me get on my road to continue the work that I've started. And also please endorse Paula Amazola, Yasmini Mani McMorin, Freddie Puza, Daryl Menthe, no on B, yes on RE. I would really love to have your support for my second term. Thank you.
Oh, sorry, I was uh, mute. I muted myself. I was just saying, Kelly, wrapping up in 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, uh, next up we have Kin Kin. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Kin Kin G. Um, I've been a resident of Culver City for 30 years and a neurologist for that period of time uh, as well. Um, I uh, served the club as its past president in 2016 and 2017. And um, I've been involved in the LACDP as well. Um, as um, I've posted on my Facebook page, uh, I've been um, endorsed by the LACDP folks and by the Southern California chapter uh, of the Americans for Democratic Action. And I've done a lot of environmental work dating far as back as 2009 uh, when I did a uh, uh, survey of uh, health effects surrounding the Inglewood oil field with the Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. I'm also on the board of uh, Sierra Club West LA and have been instrumental in uh, getting municipalities to join the Clean Power Alliance, of which Culver City is one. And I'm the only candidate who has written a ballot initiative to stop fracking and drilling in the Culver City portion of Inglewood oil field. Should the city decide that Time. Um, it's, um, it, it can't go ahead with, with the budget it has. So please vote for me, King G, November 3rd, Green Culver City. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ken Ken. Thank you. Uh, um, next, we have uh, Daryl Minty. Good evening, fellow Culver City Democrats. My name is Daryl Minty, and I'm proud to be endorsed as a progressive by the Stonewall Democratic Club, the West Side Young Democrats and council members, Megan Sally Wells, Alex Fish, many others. They know that I will fight for affordable housing, for real mobility options, for equity, and to reimagine public safety here in Culver City. I also have the experience, I believe, to be ready on day one. I am currently the vice chair of the Culver City Finance Advisory Committee, and I've been the leader of the Downtown Business Improvement District for the last four years. I believe this combination of progressive values and practical experience is what Culver City needs right now to get through COVID-19 while staying on track to build a future of equity and inclusion for all the communities that call Culver City home. So I ask you for your support to make real change here in Culver City. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Daryl. Perfect. All right. So um, I believe that wrapped up the candidates. Um, so we can move forward to um, the stack, uh, which was going to be starting with uh, William Herrera. And then um, Leah, do you want, I think I saw, did I see a message from you saying you wanted to unstack or? Um, uh, I just wonder, you know, if you need to put some. No, in. you can, no, okay. you, okay. you have, okay. So we'll have William Herrera, Leah, and then Joy will be up after uh, Leah. Remember one minute guys. Okay, thank you, uh, Culver City Democratic Club. I apologize that I can't go live with my video. Um, I would like to speak in favor of Culver City Board candidates Kelly Kent and Paula Amazola, in favor of Culver City Council candidates Yasmin McCorin, Freddie Puza, and Daryl Menthe, and against local Culver City Measure B. I lean proudly to the left as a progressive Democrat because that is the party I believe must support society's most vulnerable and disenfranchised people. I lean in this direction, not just as an empathetic ally, but as a person of color, a first generation college student who was raised by a single mother immigrant from El Salvador. I have had the privilege of benefiting from many support programs and help at every level of my journey. I believe all people, no matter their starting point, can live the American dream with adequate support and help. Although many of our CCUSD board candidates talk like progressives, I only heard two candidates that had detailed ideas. 15 seconds. The district's most vulnerable and disenfranchised students. Allies are important, but we need board members who are ready to take action. I support Kelly Kent and Paula Masola because they have specific plans to ensure the district's lowest performing students get the most time. support and help. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Leah? Okay, thank you. Um, I've worked closely with Paula as a community activist, fighting for renter protections and for significant changes to our policing. I am certain that Paula is the real deal when it comes to her commitment to, to progressive values. 
She's a first generation American, a bilingual and bicultural Latina who's dedicated her 18 year, year career in epidemiology and public health education to improving the lives of underserved communities. She is a determined person who did not allow the low expectations communicated to her by her own teachers as an English learner to stop her from getting her college degree from UC Davis and a master's in public health from UCLA. She knows how supportive teachers can make all the difference for at-risk students because she was, she was one of those students. I know she will honor her commitment to building a community of learning for all. 15 seconds. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, I said you have 15 seconds. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Please endorse Freddie Puza, Yasmin Imani McMorin, Daryl Menthe for council, uh, Kelly Kent for our school board, um, no on B and yes on RE. Thank you. Time. Thank you, Leah. Um, next, we have Joy and then um, Hector and then Eric Paiso. So, Joy, are you there? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for doing this forum because as I look around Culver City uh, as a woman of color, I, it's a little frightening right now. And I, I just want to commend you for supporting progressive ideas and progressive candidates. And to just also ask you to recognize that many of the other candidates feel like they don't support our community values in terms of just Republicans and these candidates who are endorsed by like white power groups. Um, so it's very important to me. I, I feel very emotionally um, <laughs> uh, needy in this moment to basically ask you to support the following candidates. Freddie Puza, who used to live near, to, in, uh, near me in Fox Hills and is really out in the community doing things. Um, Kelly Kent, who's just been invaluable on the school board, like she is the real deal. Paula Amazola, who I work with constantly on. Hi. Oh, thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, Hector, and then we'll have Eric. Hi, uh, my name is Hector Marin. I just, as a disclosure, uh, Kelly Kent is my wife, and I just wanted to give you a personal endorsement because I, you know, I want peace at home. But for the real reason, <laughs> I want to show my my support is uh, this this uh, position she's taken she's taken on for five years has it's been tough a lot a lot of work a lot of time you know, a lot of nights where she was hurting and crying. And I, and I asked her, why does she want to continue to do this? And, and you know, it wasn't not just the, for equity it's that she's been fighting for this whole time, but in her words, she, she wants to do it for the babies, not just our two kids who are in the school district, but for all the kids in the school district. So, you know, it, it's easy to support someone knowing that you're going to have a lot of work ahead, a lot of restless nights, but knowing that the reason why she's doing it is because she cares about not just our kids, but the kids in the community that, that she, you know, loves, personally loves. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next we have uh, Eric, and then we'll go to Disa, um, and then we'll go to Paul Ferrasi. Uh, so, Eric, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to endorse Daryl Menthe for City Council, and uh, he's one of the progressives. But I also think that if I can use this phrase, he's a progressive insider, which is rare, kind of like a white rhino. Um, <laughs> and what I mean by that is that the progressives in Culver City haven't been in, in power that long. And so he's been around a lot. He's done a ton of work with the financial committee uh, for Culver City. And he's also uh, been president of the bid, downtown bid for four years. Um, and so, I think he knows where everybody's politically stands. He knows how the city works and he'll be able to hit the ground running, um, uh, which would be great for the progressive movement. Um, he's going to know where all the levers are to be pulled. Uh, I also want to endorse Kelly Kent, who's been unbelievable on the school board and uh, most 
most honest and forthright and said the tough things when they needed to be said. Um, so I, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, sometimes it was, it was tough love. But, Hi. Um, and I'd also like to endorse- Time. Oh, Freddie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so now we have uh, Disa. Hello everyone. Um, I wanna share that I'm the co-campaign manager for Yasmin Imani McMorrin. Um, Yasmin is a remarkable human being. We are extremely fortunate that she is willing to run and serve on our city council. I've had the opportunity to get to know her very well um, because she decided to explore running very early. She declared her candidacy last year and I had the chance to speak with her at great length before she did that. Um, Yasmin is the perfect person to sit on our council today. Um, this is a time of huge opportunity and change in our community, and we really need Yasmin. She is so smart. She is so committed. She is a real progressive. She's a real champion of equity and inclusion, and it's um, just at the center of everything she does. So I just can't tell you how much I respect and appreciate her and urge you to vote for her. I'm also going to show you my other endorsements. Yasmin Imani McMoran, Freddie Puza, Daryl Mance for City Council, Kelly Kent, Paula Amasola, okay. no one I'm, meets on RE. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I have to admit I made a mistake um, and I skipped over uh, someone I respect very greatly. Um, so I'm going to pause and go back um, to uh, Alex Fish, who actually did was like the first one who put his name in the stack at 645 and I apologize. Uh, Paul, we'll get to you next. No need to apologize. Um, I would like to make sure that everybody who doesn't usually gets heard gets heard before me and I am often heard. Right now we have a climate crisis. Three of the five largest fires in California history are burning this second. Um, that absolutely has to do with decisions made at the local level. We've just seen tremendous outpourings of desire for social change in the streets. That absolutely happens at the local level. Um, homelessness is exploding. We're not even, we don't even have our eyes on it because of all the other things going on. That absolutely has to do with the local level. This council started, pardon the sports metaphor, way down in the fourth quarter and we are coming back fast. I need teammates who will help me. That's why I endorse Yasmin McMoney and McMorrin, Freddie Puza, Daryl Menthe, and I need a school board that will teach my kids the same values that I have and teach them to question and to learn and investigate. That's why I endorse Kelly Kent, Paula Amazola, and I need you to vote, vote no for measure B because it's bad and yes on measure RE so that we can reinvest in one another and our city. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alex, um, for Measure RE, too. OK, so going back to uh, the where I was at, uh, Paul Ferrazzi, are you up? Uh, yeah, I'm here. OK, uh, you have one minute. OK, I'd like to endorse Culver City Council candidate Dr. Kim Kin G, 30-year resident of Culver City and a physician that advocates on behalf of the health and safety of all residents that live adjacent to the Inglewood oil field. Kinkin has been an active, hands-on member of the Culver City Democratic Club, both serving on the board and as a past president. Kinkin's candidacy is endorsed by the California Los Angeles County Democratic Party and the Southern California Chapter of Americans for Democratic Action, where she currently serves as chair of the Environmental Committee. Kinkin also serves as a California Democratic Party delegate representing Assembly District 54. I know in working alongside Kinkin that she is a tireless progressive champion for all residents and will be such as a council member. Simply stated, a vote for Kinkin is a win-win. Thank you. Thank you, that was cute. I like that. Uh, okay, uh, up next, um, we have uh, Patrick Megan. Yep, that's me. Oh, hi Patrick. Hi. My name is Patrick Megan. I just want to say I'm supporting Paula and Kelly for school board and Yasmin and Freddie for city council. And I'm especially supporting Daryl Menthe for city council. He's making affordable housing and my mobility his number one priorities and he has the experience with the city to start from day one. Daryl Menthe is a true progressive. I'm a progressive. So Daryl has my vote and I urge you all to vote for him as well. And that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. I love it. 
Okay, um, so next we have uh, Daniel Lee. Mr. Lee in the house. Sure, and I'll just be very brief. Uh, I think you all know enough about the candidates, uh, but I'm endorsing Yasmin Imani McMoran, uh, Freddie Puza and Ken Ken Gee for city council, uh, and Paula Amazola and Kelly Kent uh, for school board. I think a number of you know these people very well. You know they they do their job. They're committed. I've had the honor of working with Ken Ken for almost eight years now on the Sierra Club Clean Break Committee, uh, Americans for Democratic Action, and in the nascent phase of the Stand LA Coalition uh, to to address neighborhood drilling. Um, so I really hope you look into all of the candidates and do your individual research, um, and get out there and vote on November third. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Um, okay, so going down, we have Laura Stewart and then Donna Kent, you'll be up next. Laura, are you there? Can someone find if Laura's on the list? I have too many screens up to be able to hunt. Laura, going once, going twice. Wait, wait, she's on the list. Laura, you need to unmute. Thanks, Kareem. No, she's not unmuting. Too bad. All right. Uh, well, well, if she comes back, we'll see if we can circle back. Uh, Donna, are you there? Donna Kent? I am. Yes. All right. You ready? Okay. So um, I am wanting to put forward my endorsement for all five progressive candidates. Kelly Kent and Paula for school board, Freddie, Yasmin, and Daryl for city council. You know, they've all fought for renters and progressive housing measures and their environmental sustainability. They have fought for reimagining public safety. Um, and I think they are, if we are going to carry forward with our council, they are the people we need. And the, the work that's been done already on the school board that Kelly has helped initiate will only be supported even more by Paula. Um, and I think the two of them on that board are gonna make a big difference for our kids. That's it. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, all right, coming up next, we have uh, Cynthia, and then Cynthia will go with Michelle Weiner, and then Jeff will be up. Um, I would be typing this, but between time and looking at this list, I can't keep up. So I'm going to just keep doing it verbally. Um, so, uh, Cynthia, are you there? I'm here. All right. Hi. Um, I just want to say I am supporting Kelly Kent and, oh, and let me, let me look at you all. There. Um, I'm supporting Kelly Kent and Paula Amazola for school board. It's very important to me to note that neither of them has sought and neither of them has received the endorsement of the Culver City Police Officers Association or of Protect Culver City um, organization. And um, uh, I, as, as was pointed out in the New York Times today, um, is we can't have real reform until um, police union money is considered toxic, not coveted by candidates. Um, let's let's uh, move forward into justice and uh, prefer candidates um, like Kelly and Paula. That's all. Thank you. Um, okay, so then uh, Michelle, Michelle, are you? Are you... Oh, okay, and then Michelle, then we'll have Jeff, and then we have Miss Jimmy. Hi, we've talked a lot about the values that we're supporting, and specifically, I'm voting for candidates who listen to the young people they're for equity and inclusion, prioritizing affordable housing, supporting a walkable, bikeable Culver City. They are looking for significant change to public safety and a citizen's oversight board. So for these reasons, I definitely support Yasmin and um, Freddie and um, Paula and Kelly. And um, my third vote, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still pondering, so bear with me. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so then we have, uh, did I skip over Jeff? Oh, I did. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, I skipped over you the second time. So you were next before Miss Jimmy. 
Um, are you there, Jeff? I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Zoom makes I'm, me need glasses. Uh, I'm speaking to support the candidates who represent the grassroots progressive movements that are future of the Democratic Party. When groups like the Culver City Action Network, the Culver City Community Coalition, and Protect Culver City Renters have fought for sanctuary, police reform, rent stabilization, and renter protections, affordable housing, shutting down the Inglewood oil field, forming the Equity and Human Relations Advisory Committee, and confronting the city's legacy of exclusion and xenophobia, Freddie, Yasmin, Kelly, Paula, Kinkin, Kin, and Daryl have been there. Each offers a formidable intellect, a breadth of life experience, and a record of professional accomplishment and community engagement. Everyone talks about equity and sustainability now, but these candidates were talking about climate change before Greta and about rethinking public safety before George Floyd. They have consistently stood up for real systemic change and deserve your votes. All six of them. I'm using Michelle's extra vote. There's only a five. No, yes, but he mentioned six. Uh, Michelle left one over, so I took it. Yeah. Now back to Gina. That's funny. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Um, all right, uh, Miss Jimmy, you're up, and then Shannon, um, you'll be up, and then after that, I see Tom Camarella. Okay, very good. Um, I've had the fortune of listening to all of these candidates more than one time. <laughs> which is uh, means I've spent a lot of time either on Zoom somewhere with somebody. But um, I think that as a, as a retired teacher who taught for 40 years, having someone who represents a specific segment of a, a school community is important. I think that um, having someone from the LGBTQ plus community on the school board I think that's school board. No, that's city council, I guess. Anne Allaire, it would be a good representative. She's done work that I think that's outstanding. She started, I think she, she completed as an incumbent. Small businesses are the ones that hire all of our people. They hire the community people. And uh, so I think that these different groups need diversity within themselves. And I would support Alvera because I've watched him grow over the four years. I interviewed him four years ago. I interviewed him this time and I have seen the growth. I love the work he does with youth and feeding the hungry, the, uh, the homeless on Thursdays. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jenny. Um, okay, uh, Shannon, are you there? And then we'll go to Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Jane after, or excuse me, Tom after Shannon. I'm here. Um, so I'd like to say that there's a lot of cerebral things, so I'll be the heart and spirit. And so I'd say that it was Kin Kin Gee who took me from a raging anarchist off the street who wasn't, you know, with no guidance and brought me in as a recording secretary and kind of channeled my energy and angst. And it was under her guidance that in her leadership that I actually wanted to join the club. I'm very happy to be casting her name um, as for me. Um, she's always been in every type of activist event, and I want to say that when things got rough in my personal life, she's always stepped across the executive board and been a heart member there and said, I'm here for you. I think that's really important. I think we really need compassion to lead us. That said, I've often been alone at these activist events and feeling vulnerable, and I'll see Freddie Pizza standing there in all his tall glory and ask him to please escort me. And he's never declined, as in Freddie Pizza is a walking safe space for people of color, women. And I just feel like that's the type of person you want to have as our leader. So, okay. and Freddie. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so now we uh, have uh, Ronnie Jane and then Judy, you're be up, and then Amy. We're, almost, we're getting through it, we're more almost uh, there. Okay, we're splitting each other up this time. Uh, the, the tag team of love. Um, we, you know, I, there, we do have a, an abundance, a wealth of, of some really good candidates. And Jeff, I feel your pain because uh, there are some really great people. Uh, we've worked with a number of them over the years and ultimately it came down for me. Actually school board was a lot easier. We, um, I 
Kelly, you're absolutely wonderful. It's a pleasure to uh, re-endorse you again. Paula Amazola, I really think you'll do some great work. On Culver City Council, Kin Kin uh, and I have been um, hip to hip doing a lot of uh, work together. Yasmin, pleasure to know you, uh, glad to endorse you, and Freddie Puza, the same thing. Uh, go Holly, woo, Sydney, B is bad, and R E, yes. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, and I, I would be remiss. Tom, I'm sorry, I know I jumped around. <laughs> okay. Very quickly, uh, Kelly Kent and Paula Amazola. Uh, and then I, this is all progressive. Kinkin is a progressive. Uh, Yasmin, Freddie, Holly, no on B, yes on R E, and Sydney. That's it. Thank you. All right. Um, now I'm back on track here. Uh, okay, Judy, and then Amy, and then we have Julie LaRue. So Judy, Amy, Julie LaRue. Um, Judy, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Right. Hi, everybody. My name is Judy Sherman. Um, there's so many good people. Um, I am here as a resident of Fox Hills for over 30 years. I'm here to wholeheartedly endorse Freddie Puza for City Council. Um, all that he has done, both professionally and as a community volunteer, has brought him to this moment. He is the perfect combination of compassion, maturity, and experience. I can attest personally um, that he is a great listener and a team player. Working with him on the Fox Hill Neighborhood Association Board, he is not afraid to work, even with the details others would find mundane. In addition to his ideas being quite concrete. They are also innovative and holistic, born of someone who has worked in the real world. Again, he's a perfect combination. He's a great, his great listening skills combined with his inquisitiveness reflects his respect. <laughs> oh, okay, boy, I was, yep. am I done? Oh my goodness, yeah. okay, go for it. That's okay. Thank you. I know a minute flies by. I totally oh, understand yeah. it. I am, I am rather talkative. Um, all right. So then we have Amy and then Julie. And then Daryl, you'll be after Julie. Amy, are you there? Wait, I saw Amy and now I don't see Amy. It's the musical squares. Where's Amy? Oh, I see Amy now. Amy, uh, you can mute your, unmute yourself. Go to unmute. I don't know why I'm not in there. Uh oh. Okay. You, are you good? Uh, it says we can hear you, Amy. Oh, we cannot hear you anymore. Okay, you mute it yourself. Unmute yourself again. All right. Now you're good. Now can you? Okay. Now you can at least hear me. Yes. 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 Okay. I don't know why it's not opening up. But oh, okay. Doesn't matter. Um, my main thing is, I, I guess, because everybody else is talking about city council and everything else. My main thing is I want everybody to vote for Biden. We don't need Trump to be reelected for another four years. Um, I know that's been an issue back and forth with a lot of people that have wanted, you know, Bernie and everybody else. Um, but we've got to join together. This is a no brainer at this point. So I just want to make sure that everybody at least does that, if nothing else. Um, I think everybody uh, that's going to be running, I'm sure will do a really good job. And uh, our club will, will back, you know, good people. That's it. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we have uh, Julie uh, LaRue and then Daryl, you'll be up and then Carlene. Julie, are you there? There we go. I unmuted. Oh. Hi, <laughs> I, I'm um, Julie. I'm working on Paula's campaign. I'm going to disclose that. I've known her for many years. Our kids started in kindergarten and now they're in high school at Culver City Schools. And one of the reasons I wanted to work on her campaign was just her passion for progressive values and her history. She's a first generation going to college, got a master's in public health, which I think is really important in these times. I know she's going to advocate for the undeserved, 
have served in our community and be really passionate. So, um, and I think people have talked about her work at USC, um, helping the students find careers after their career in public health. And um, she's bilingual, bicultural. I think that's something that's really important on the school board. And I also want to encourage everyone to endorse Yasmin and Freddie and Kelly Kent. Thank you, Julie. Um, up next, Daryl, and then we'll have Carlene, and then the famous Karim. <laughs> All right, uh, Daryl, I see you. You ready? Can you unmute? Daryl, okay, you're good. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, first of all, very quickly, I want to reiterate what Amy said. Uh, it is absolutely imperative that we as a party get behind Joe Biden. If we want to defeat uh, Donald Trump in November, we have to unite behind Joe Biden. It's the only way. Uh, if we are united as a party, we win. If we are divided, we lose. We must support him. In terms of local elections, I support Anna Lair and Kelly Kent for school board. For city council, I support Albert Vera and Daryl Met. Uh, I've worked with Albert Vera on the uh, Civil Service Commission. He is a, uh, a dedicated a community servant. He's someone who's given generously to uh, charitable causes and he will be a wonderful city councilman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, coming up we have uh, Carlene, then Kareem. Right here. Hello. I support liberty and justice for all, especially people of color. And I support a sustainable environment. Therefore, I am endorsing Jasmine, Freddie, Kelly Kent, Paula Amazola, and Daryl Mente. Thank you. Thank you. Short is great. Um, okay, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> yes, it is. Kareem and then Adrian the Ryan. Um, you'll be up and then Rick Tuttle, you'll be after Adrian. Thank you. I'm glad to be finally doing that green screen thing. Um, so at the top, we're going to have city council members. I am supporting heartily Yasmini Manny McMahon. Freddie Pusa and Daryl Mente for school board, Kelly Kent and Paula Amazola. And for the measure, measure B is terrible, supported by fascists. And measure RE is absolutely great. It will uh, hammer the developers. That's it. Thank you. Oh, uh, by, one more thing. I'm going to put that uh, wonderful little guide uh, in the chat. And if you want it, uh, just email me. And if you have more questions, email me or phone me. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. Um, all right, so next we have Adrian Narayan, then we'll have Rick Tuttle, and then Kim Griffin. We're almost there, this is the last five. Great, thank you so much, Gina. My name is Adrian, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for um, letting me join here today. Um, I'm here in support of uh, candidate Freddy Puza, um, running for city council. And uh, I just wanna speak on mm -hmm. the fact that, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to know Freddie for the last uh, four years. I graduated in May 2018 from Loyola Marymount University, uh, where I had the pleasure of meeting him. Um, I am a proud resident of Culver City, uh, born and raised. And even though I just recently turned 25, Freddie makes me feel like I'm older than him. So <laughs> uh, that's been, you know, he's not only been a good mentor, a great friend, but he's been able to speak to young Americans like myself. Um, currently, um, I serve as an advisor to Congresswoman Katie Porter, and in my role, I've been having a lot of battles working in um, spaces such as Orange County, as I'm sure we all know, and Freddie has been not only a good mentor there, but has been able to voice the concerns here, whether it's wanting to make sure we could reform public safety in Culver City, ensuring that the voices of people of color, um, queer Americans, and people um, are, are heard. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you. All right, um, coming up next, we have Mr. Rick Tuttle, and then we'll have Kim Griffin, and then after Kim will be Mike Plua, and we're gonna end this with our uh, DNC member, Mr. Andrew Lockman. So Rick, you're up. 
me first start by congratulating the leadership of the club, the 200 members. That's, that's terrific. And people join for a variety of reasons. I think it's great what you're doing. Yes, we must support the Biden-Harris ticket. I hope everyone will vote yes on that. No on Measure B. It's very bad news for renters. Yes on RE. I strongly support Kin Kin G for the council, uh, Freddie Puza uh, for the council, and also, of course, Yasmin Amani McMoran. Each of these will give a very special voice to uh, the challenges we face the city. Paula Amazola and Kelly Kent for the school board. Kelly's been terrific. Uh, and uh, Paula Amazola, with whom uh, Rebecca and I have worked uh, on a variety of matters in equity and human relations related areas is also terrific. I urge a yes vote on that group. I think I'm in the same alignment exactly, I think, with Councilman, our good friend, Councilman Daniel Lee. I believe, I may be wrong, but I think, I think I'm basically urging a, a, that we join Daniel Lee in support for this. Thank Oops. you very much. Thank you, Rick. Um, all right, uh, we have uh, Kim and then we'll go Mike and then lastly, Andrew. So Kim, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All righty, you ready? Yes, um, okay. I just wanted to, oh, you hear the motorcycle. Um, I'm outside because it's hot inside. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm here to endorse Albert Vera for Culver City Council um, as a black woman. And I guess full disclosure, like Hector said, he is my boyfriend. And I have to say that because of what I have to deal with as a black woman with systemic racism, in the United States right now. He is the man who is ending strong with me. He is an advocate for the Black Lives Matter movement, and he is in support of all of the issues that are going on with that. I'm also um, proud of him because he is pushing for the homeless and being on the board of directors with the Upward Bound House. I think he has a lot to offer for the residents of Culver City, and he will do well on the city council to help the city grow and be the best city that it can be. I'm done. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sorry, I hit the wrong button on my, my timer now. Whoopsie. Two seconds. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, now we have Mike uh, Plua and then we'll have Andrew. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I assume you can hear me with the nod. Good. Great. <laughs> Uh, I'll try to go super fast, and uh, if someone else can speak after me. Um, uh, Kelly, Paula, Freddie, and Yasmin are people I've met um, through their work with the school board and um, also on the uh, rent control protections. I'm a renter here in Culver City, have been for uh, around 10 years now, um, and uh, I know a lot of renters that are distressed uh, at the idea of the rent being raised beyond what, for people I know, they're retired. Um, I know someone mentioned about Prop 19 protecting retirees. I think that we need to protect retired renters in Culver City uh, to stabilize rents. Uh, so no on B. I was about to say yes on B. And I know it's no on B, yes on RE. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then taking us on home, our lovely DNC member, Mr. Andrew Lachman. Thank you. And I like the way you said that, Andrew. It sounded much more sophisticated there for a moment. I I, you know what, my Hoosier, my Indiana slur may come out. I am really tired. Um, so it, it sounded a little fancy, but it's going to sound real country here soon. So <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up in Baltimore, so I can do the same. Uh, no, uh, seriously, uh, we managed to get through our, our finance advisory committee really quickly. And I wanted to get here for a couple of reasons. I mean, there's so many of the candidates that I agree with, with uh, Councilman Alex Fish. So I'm not going to go through all of those. And of course, we need to support RE. I was very proud to be a part of that effort, um, as well as opposing Measure B. And for me, that's a yes or no question at this point. The council was elected to make decisions, and we need to, you know, generally support those. But I want to talk about two candidates in particular who I've really enjoyed my relationship with. One has been Kelly Kent um, because of the welcoming and getting involved. My daughter goes to El Marino. Education is obviously very personal in Culver City Schools. And secondly is Daryl Mente, who's been my, who's my vice chair in the uh, Finance Advisory Committee. Losing Tom Small, we're losing a passionate thoughtful progressive who really enjoys getting into the details of governing and of all the candidates we interviewed in the county committee he was the most thoughtful and the most passionate about housing about progressive policy and we need to maintain one person who has that thoughtfulness and that uh, he has and i really hope you'll 
support Daryl Menthe as well as the other candidates that were mentioned. Thank you. Um, and that wraps it up, but I'm going to take a point of privilege as the timekeeper slash uh, stack person. Um, and I'm not going to talk about candidates because I feel like we, everyone seems to be pretty well aligned on who we're supporting here. I'm going to talk about a situation where if we don't do something, um, none of it's going to matter, which is poll working. Um, with COVID, you know, a lot of our elderly um, and our, uh, you know, retirees tend to be the ones that work the polls, but this season, it's not going to be safe for them. Um, as a nurse and someone who's kind of in the, I would say, mid front line since I'm administration now, but um, flu and COVID season are too dangerous for me to want to put an elderly or a high risk person out on the polls. And so I'm leaving it up to our, uh, the lesser high risk people. Um, you know, we have a very, very big voting period, 11 days, um, where there's still going to be polls open. And now the Staples Center, Dodger Stadium is going to be a poll, uh, a polling center. Um, and there's going to be, there are going to be a lot of very big places that are going to be poll, uh, polling centers. And that won't happen if we do not have people to staff them. So I encourage you to do it. I'm actually going to take, try to take a day or two off of work. Literally, uh, I don't know, God, I don't know how much money that's going to, yeah, but anyway, um, to do this because it is imperative. So like I said, um, none of these endorsements will matter if we can't get the votes. We can't get the votes if the polls aren't open. Um, people still want to go to the polls. They, um, you know, we can't trust that everyone's going to do a vote by mail. Um, so we still need to try and support um, the uh, LA Registrar. You can go to lavote.net and sign up to be a poll worker. You can also check your registration. Also, I'm going to put the link in the chat to ballot tracks where you, if you are going to do vote by mail, you will be able to track your ballot from the time it is sent out to the time that, um, you know, when you send it back, it's received and to the time that your vote is cast that you'll get emails or text messages. Very, very imperative during this time. So I'm going to put those links in the chat. I just wanted to take, I went well over a minute, but like I said, it was important. I'm done. Pete, this is your show again. Thanks a lot, Gina, for doing all this. Uh, better you than me. That's all I can say. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for keeping it uh, to schedule. We're doing very well. I'd like to open the business meeting now, and uh, we'll approve the agenda. Everyone was emailed the agenda along with the link to this meeting. Uh, if there's no objection, we'll approve the agenda. Do we have any objections? Just raise your little blue hand if you do. If not, we'll go right ahead, and uh, I'll give you my... President's report, which is the voting procedures. We're having an election starting tonight at nine o'clock for endorsements. Uh, all the things we've been talking about tonight will be on the ballot, starting with Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris for president and vice president. I strongly urge a unanimous vote for uh, Joe and Kamala for uh, the top jobs. Uh, we need to have them on our endorsement card when we send it out. We're sending out 13,763 endorsement cards to the people of Culver City who aren't Republicans. And uh, it's gonna include people who, beyond just the Democrats, the registered Democrats, just any, any household that is not exclusively registered as Republicans will get one of our cards. And hopefully it will have, uh, I'm, I'm confident that it will have Joe and Kamala at the top and all the other uh, things that we recommend. So vote, you'll have 24 hours starting at 9 p.m to uh, vote. If you don't get the uh, ballot, uh, look for it in your junk mail folder and uh, call me if it's not there and uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, you have to return it within 24 hours, but don't wait until the 24 hours is uh, up. Just do it as soon as you can. Uh, we'll get a count tomorrow night after nine o'clock and then we'll have a second ballot for whatever propositions or candidates uh, don't get 60%. We have to get 60% in order to endorse um, a proposition or a candidate. Does anybody have any questions on the election procedures? All right, we'll move on. We have um, approval of the minutes. I uploaded the minutes to the chat so you can take a look at them. Basically, all we did in the uh, meeting in August, the business meeting, was elect uh, our new first vice president, Jeff uh, Schwartz, and that was unanimous, and that's reflected in the minutes. 
Uh, if there's no objection, we'll approve the minutes. And we have uh, a membership secretary's report next. Uh, Diane, are you here? Would you like to give us our count on membership? I know we got I'll, a few members today. I'll check on her. Okay. Uh, and do we have Eric for the treasurer's report? No, 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 I'm here. Oh, you're I'm here. here. Diane's going to give us a report. Membership secretary. 206. 206. 206. And we have another we have another uh, member we have another lifetime. lifetime we now have 18 lifetime yes andrew lockman thank you for joining as a lifetime member um, yeah. and uh supporting the club with uh what we need which is cash to send out those those postcards and the 206 including lifetime members correct okay uh, let's move on to treasurer's report since uh, Eric is here also. All right. August was a very good year and I have great news. We started off with 10951 Okay, our expenses. We paid $134 for our P.O. Box yearly rental and we paid Pete Rockwell $19 for election buddy. That's $153 in uh, expenditures. All right, we made $460.98 in dues. So that's the only income. So we have an ending balance of 11,259.19. So we're doing a big mailing this month. So in next month, you know, for, for, for the uh, report for this month, and we'll so give next month, we can well afford to send to a lot more people than we usually do. I hope it's a good investment. That's what we're doing. Yeah, the, the cards are going to cost uh, a little over $6,000 for everything. Tax, uh, printing, mailing, the whole works, postage. Most po most of that is postage. Yeah, so we'll have and, a lot uh, more money left for- uh, We will be arriving at people's houses uh, the day that the ballots are sent out by uh, the county and the state to uh, the, the uh, absentee ballots, which is October 5th. So that's when the postcards will arrive. Um, and we have a resolution that was printed in the newsletter, which is next on the agenda. And uh, sorry, I like Pete, um, just really, I just see a hand pop up. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Rick, did you have a question or was that from previously? Oh, I, I do have a comment. Again, I want to reiterate what I said briefly in opening, my opening part of my remarks earlier. I want to congratulate leadership. Pete and Cynthia and, uh, and, and Gina and all, all the others, uh, uh, Diane, etc. cetera. It's a, a treasurer also, Eric and the rest. You have taken the club, and I know why people join. They join partly to back candidates. But you have, you're, the, the viability you've created, the newsletters, the dynamism of what you've done in difficult times, we're at over 200 members. And I remember numbers like 128, 118, 132. This is terrific. So I say congratulations. And it's nice to own the moment. You've grown and you, and, uh, and it's just terrific what you've done. I yield my time back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, I've got two notes. One is to remind people to look for a second ballot on the 11th, which will be uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, we'll most likely have a proposition at least that doesn't get 60% and we'll take a second ballot under the bylaws. And uh, Gina is asking me to repeat the voting procedure and what will happen if there's a second ballot. We have people asking that in the chat. Okay, what will happen if there's a second ballot is at nine o'clock on the 11th of September, you will receive a second ballot and it will have what is um, uh, left to vote on. If the candidates, uh, if we don't fill all the seats on the city council and the school board uh, by getting 60% votes for candidates uh, for all those seats on the first ballot, then the bylaws require that we have a second ballot. So we'll take the uh, lower uh, vote getters off of the ballot and have a second ballot. And uh, for the propositions, we'll have uh, see what happens with the proposition. So we don't know what will be on the second ballot yet, but we're pretty sure we're gonna have to have one. So look for a second ballot on the 9 p.m. on the 11th from Election Buddy, and 
Again, if it's not in your inbox, it's most likely in your junk mail folder because it doesn't come from uh, me or the club email, it comes from election buddy. And uh, so email programs have a way of uh, hiding those from you. Uh, and if you have a problem, uh, send me an email. I put my email in the chat. Um, it's uh, Pete underscore Rockwell at hotmail.com. And I also put, by the way, how I'm going to be voting uh, on these ballots uh, tonight uh, on a piece of paper that I typed up and I loaded that up uh, in the chat. So anybody who's interested can take a look at that. Um, you can download it. Now I'd like to move on to the resolution um, and that it was printed in the newsletter. It was written by Rick, uh, by Jeff Schwartz and it was, it is, um, I'll read it. I'll share it with uh, you as I read it. And it's called resolution to be voted on at the September 9th, 2020 general meeting of the Culver City Democratic Club resolution on Culver City Police Officers Association's public relations campaign against Culver City Action Network. Whereas police have a professional duty to protect and serve every community member. Whereas police have too often surveilled, harassed and attacked activists in the labor, civil rights, anti-war, gay liberation and other progressive movements whereas analysis of CCPD arrest records shows similar over-policing of Black and Latinx people, whereas right-wing conspiracy theories and vigilantism are spreading under the brand of, quote, law and order, unquote, and whereas the Culver City Action Network has worked publicly in Culver City to protect, educate, and empower our most vulnerable community members, now therefore be it resolved that the Culver City Democratic Club joins City Council members Alex Fish, <clears throat> Daniel Lee, Megan Sally Wells, and Thomas Small in condemning the Culver City Police Officers Association's public relations campaign attempting to demonize the Culver City Action Network, Kelly and John Kent, and other local activists seeking to reimagine public safety in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I'd like to ask if there's discussion of the uh, resolution. Um, Pete, as the author, I'd like to put this in a little bit of context because maybe not everybody wastes as much time on social media as I do. Um, a couple of weeks, ago, the Culver City Action Network, also known as CCAN, is an informal community group, uh, progressive political organization, informal, no funds, no bylaws, no officers that uh, were instrumental in getting the Culver City to become a sanctuary city, has done a lot of stuff around immigrant rights and tenants rights, and um, more recently around, um, you know, reimagining policing, reallocating their budget to social services, et cetera, putting in some accountability and oversight and so on. Um, so the um, Culver City Police Union has recently hired a public relations firm that specializes in defending police departments from reform campaigns. And they put out a ominous video on their Facebook page and other social media. Who is the Culver City Action Network? Who are these shadowy people? You know, and uh, it specifically called out Kelly and John Kent who are not involved with CCAN. Um, and it's, you know, I personally, first of all, CCAN has been doing public events for several years now, and people from CCAN have been identifying themselves at, as such at public meetings all the time. And CCAN has done community forums on housing and on immigrant rights. Some um, members of CCAN have met with the police to uh, help improve their policies around things like the drones and the, uh, the, the, mainly the drones. I think that uh, lawyers from CCAN helped rewrite the drone policy so it was somewhat less uh, terrifying. Uh, and same thing with the sanctuary city policy. So um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll try to be shorter. Um, but also it's very scary when, you know, the police department is, you know, attempting to intimidate local activists. Uh, 
and especially calling out the Kents by name. So I think that I'm, I would be delighted if the club would lend a little bit of support to this. Um, I'd also like to thank Pete for reaching out to the four city council members named to get their approval. Um, I went by it based on statements they had made in the press and the Culver City Catalyst and Crossroads, but uh, they all confirmed that they were happy to have their names used in this way. So, second. <laughs> uh, we actually have a point of discussion. I think uh, Tom had his hand up. Tom. Calling on Tom Camarello. I wanted to proudly second this. It is time, and I appreciate Jeff uh, writing this, and I think the club is, this is time, and, and I, I'm wholeheartedly for this. Any more uh, discussion? We have uh, a motion on the floor. Rick Tuttle? Well, yes, I, I support this, and I'm, I'm also, I've been distressed that the Kent family, uh, Kelly and, and- Rick, we can't hear you. You, you need, yeah, get a little closer to the mic. I, I support this, and I'm also particularly distressed by the naming of a, a private citizen, Mr. Kent, and also Kelly, uh, uh, by, by that attack. Uh, I think it's, it's distressing. It has to be, to borrow Tom Camarillo's phrase, this has to be called out. I, I urge the yes vote. All right, shall we have the question? Yes, call the question. All in favor, please raise your little blue hand. <laughs> That's how we do it in uh, Zoom. There's a little, way that you can raise hand and uh, it goes up and I, we, we see all, look at all these little blue hands that are going up now. So far it looks, um, Cynthia would like to uh, say that her, since she's a co-host, she doesn't have a blue hand, but she's voting in favor. Uh, Me too. It's Gina's a brown also, hand this time. It's a brown Gina's, hand. Gina's holding up a brown hand. I put a I, clap. <laughs> and some of the people on the phone don't have a chance to vote because... Um, Hi, for going to participants. Okay, I'm going to have to count because some people haven't um, raised their... It would be good to explain it, Pete. So for people yeah, if you, if you yeah. guys, um, if you are on the Zoom, uh, the either computer app, please go to where at the bottom where it says participants or wherever it says participants and click that open, you will see the option to raise your little blue hand. Um, I literally bottom? had three hands, my own hand, the blue and the, the, the yellow, <laughs> three hands. Can't attack my friends and get away with it. When you see the blue hand, after you click when on participants, you have to click on the blue hand to make it raise. Right? Yeah, you do have to click on it. But so at it. the bottom, you should see participants and then you should see options. Yes, no, go slower, go faster. Somewhere in there is a blue hand. Uh, and for, uh, it's on the left. Eight. This is also for Ronnie. She's in the restroom. But it's not, don't you okay. see? You don't have it. How come we don't I, have nothing, it? no blue hand comes up. I don't have one either. Okay, well, we can do it the other way with the actual hand being held up to the camera. If you're on video, turn on your video and we'll see. A lot of people have the, uh, the video turned off, in which case, yeah. if you, we can see the hand, then that counts. And if you don't find the little blue hand, turn on your video and just hold your hand up like this, and that will count. Because I, for one, since I'm the host, they don't give me a blue hand, so I'm holding my hand up. Um, I'm looking at, okay, uh, it looks- Can we do uh, a poll? Is this the order of the blue hand? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should set up a poll here. Um, or actually, um, if you can do the yes and no's um, too, um, that actually some might make it a little easier. And I think you should get a count. Yeah. Okay. I can do a screenshot. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's. If you don't find the blue hand, there's a little circle at the bottom of the uh, participants list that has a a white check mark in it. It's a green circle with a white check mark, and under it it says yes. If you click on that. Uh, that works. I just clicked on it and now I have a little green check mark. So you can either use a blue hand uh, 
for yes or a green check mark for yes. Let's see if we check yes. We uh, and that way, I, oh, actually. actually, it's easier if everyone, if you agree with this, um, if you are voting yes, just click the, just go and click the yes too. You can lower your blue yeah, hand because we're right. actually getting a count. So yeah, we're getting a count are, now. I'm sorry. That's the best if way you to are, do it. Yes. If you are voting yes, please hit the little no. green check mark. If you are voting no, you can hit the red what? check mark. Okay. And if you choose to abstain on this vote. the votes and uh donna can you mute um and so um yeah if you choose to abstain then please um that's how you can uh raise your blue hand so we can count the abstention so yes means green check mark if you are voting yes if you are voting no then that is the no with the red x if you are abstaining if you are abstaining once again, three times. If you are abstaining, then keep your blue hand raised if you are choosing to abstain. Okay? And if you don't have a participants thing and you're on video because you're a co-host like I am, raise your hand. Um, but if you're, if you're a co-host, you can, you can hit the check mark. Oh yeah, work. I guess I could do that. Sorry. Yeah, so we all have the little green, uh, circle with the white check mark in it. So you, use that if you can, if you're voting yes. Uh, it looks overwhelmingly yes as it is. No. Yes, I, we have, I, out of 63 candidates, we have 46 voting yes. So I believe we have met threshold. Yeah, we have a majority in favor of the resolution. So thank you for everybody who uh, voted and uh, we'll uh, move on to announcements. The resolution has passed. And we'll uh, print it again in the newsletter and let everybody know that it's passed. Send a copy to the police association. Oh dear. I guess that's my job. Is it unanimous? <laughs> it's not unanimous, but it's uh, as close as we can get to unanimous uh, with the little check marks and blue hands and stuff. Uh, I think Shannon, we had a 46, um, 46 uh, yeses out of 63 total uh, attending this meeting right now. Well, it's not unanimous. Um, it's 46 no. out of 63. Yeah, nobody voted no. So we, there was no, no. So we have no, we have no nays. Nobody voted against it that I could see. I'm, then that I'm, means it's unanimous. That's that what, I thought that unanimous. meant unanimous. Yeah, I guess well, it does. no, because there are still uh, people that either didn't vote. So does that count as unanimous? Well, you, because it, it, they might be confused. Abstain, like, abstaining. I consider anyone's not saying nay to to not be against it. Like it doesn't have to sit. You know. It takes a, an affirmative act of an abstention is one thing, but if they decline to vote, and then you have yeses and no noes, that would be considered unanimous. All right. All right then we'll go with unanimous. All right, good. And uh, by the way, on the uh, the ballot that we're voting for on endorsements, an abstention is as if that ballot on that issue didn't exist. So if you abstain, it's not going to lower. It's not going to hurt the chances of getting a uh, sixty percent vote for for whatever that is. If someone had voted and said I abstain, then it probably wouldn't be considered unanimous. But that's not the case here. There was yeses and people decline to vote. That's not the same as voting as an abstention. Who, who in the right mind would say no to this? I don't understand. Nobody did. Thank That's God. the good news. Yes. Okay, does anybody have any announcements? If not, we'll uh, move on to our uh, final item uh, on the agenda. Todd has an announcement. All right, Todd. Mr. President, okay. I, th this is more a suggestion for an agenda item for the October meeting. Is this an appropriate time for me to mention that? Sure. Thank you. Um, I got gray hair and so I've been through a few elections and pretty much every election of my lifetime somebody says this is the most important election in American history. People are saying it again uh, this time and this time it's true uh, for reasons that I think many of us uh, fully understand. Um, Mr. President, we have one more meeting uh, before uh, this enormously consequential uh, national election and I would like to the vote, I don't know, 15 minutes in the October meeting, 
to talking about the national election. There's lots more to talk about than just vote for Biden, don't vote for Trump. I would like to talk about with my fellow knowledgeable and informed Democrats about the national strategy. I'd like to talk about keeping the House. I especially am interested, in, and I bet a lot of people here are too, interested in devoting a little bit of money and, and putting in a little bit of virtual shoe leather, leather on the 33 Senate races and this epic battle to maybe win the Senate and get some progressives elected um, in you know, which states are the best ones. I really would like to get some intel from my former, I'm sorry, from my fellow knowledgeable and informed Democrats. So I suggest that in the final meeting before this national election, which is our October meeting, we put on the agenda for 15 minutes to just kind of have an open forum to talk about the November election. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dad. That sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, Andrew. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate my fellow TV star, Gina Harris, on uh, her wonderful performance at the National Convention. Um, secondly, just to follow on what Ted was saying, I sat through a call today with Innovators for Biden, and we we're talking with a couple state representatives from Iowa. They are nine seats away from flipping the Iowa legis uh, House to Democrat. The Texas legislature is seven, I think it's either four or seven seats away from flipping the Texas House from Democrat, from Republican to Democrat. These state races are, are starting to make a big difference and they make a big difference in redistricting as well, uh, as well as affecting people's lives. Uh, one of my friends uh, two years ago, uh, this is someone I met through, uh, through stuff I do with DNC Small Business Council, but she took out the guy who authored the bathroom bill in Texas. Uh, so these states may make a big difference. And if there's an opportunity to help on a couple of these levels in whatever ways we can, I know there's problems every, you know, we've got a bunch of different places we're fighting these battles, but it's important to make a difference. And if people can help on that level as well, uh, it will make sure we hold on to the house past 2021. Thank you. I'd like to call on Greg Bartlett. He has an announcement. All right, just a quick announcement. Uh, SoCal Blue has finished our, um, well, finished, finished a work in progress. Uh, our ballot guide, which compares different organizations' endorsements of the different statewide propositions and then links to endorsements for uh, down ballot, um, or li links to down ballot endorsements uh, it, based on uh, sorted by county. Uh, Cover City Dem Club will be represented there. And um, just, uh, I just put the link in the chat. If y'all wanna go take a look at your convenience, you can make, make your educated decisions. Thank you. Leah? Leah Pressman. Um, I, I wanted to respond to Tad and encourage anyone who has ideas that they want to um, put in the newsletter to propose writing something for the newsletter as another way for us to talk to each other about the elections coming up. Newsletter and website. Ah, yeah, yeah, our website is active again and we're uh, looking for things that people would like to post on the website. So uh, email them to me if you got them and we'll put them in the newsletter and on the website and or. And our this Facebook group is very active. active. Oh, oh my, this, this afternoon, afternoon they, they were just, just burning, burning up the, up the internet. internet. Um, and we're, we're, we're on Twitter, Pete, can you mute? Twitter and Instagram. Thank you. Sorry. No, I was asking Pete to mute because the echo was, you guys were kind of reverbing off each other. You can unmute yourself, Cynthia. Sorry, just please follow us on um, Twitter and Instagram and I'll put the links in the chat. Okay, I don't see any more uh, people wanting to make announcements. Does anybody want to make an announcement? The ballot. Uh, oh, the ballot is starting to uh, come in. If check your after we wrap up the meeting, check your email for oh, Tom, the. Tom uh, has something to say. Oh, Tom, go ahead, Tom. I just wanted us to close uh, in in memory of Herb uh, Rosenblum. Rosenblum. Rosenberg. Yeah, the, um, the his headstone was unveiled the other day, and uh, it's just another, you know,
reminder and uh, of how important he was to the clubs for so many years, how important Diane still is today. And, Second. Uh, that's yeah, that, that's actually uh, on, on our agenda. We already have it on oh. the written agenda. Um, so thank you for that as a reminder. And uh, if uh, there's no objection, we will adjourn the meeting now in uh, memory of her. Oh, uh, Eric, did you have something you wanted to add? I want to move to adjourn in Herb's name. All right, in Herb's name. Okay, we're going to adjourn the meeting in memory of Herb Rosenberg. Thank you, everybody. This has been a great meeting. Eight, thank, eight. Eight. thank you, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Well done. Thank you, guys. We almost yeah, reached 92. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you Kareem. 92 yeah. participants. Yeah. Oh, we got up to 92? I believe. Oh, 88. Oh, my God. That's amazing. All right. Uh, that's... I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, get some Gina, sleep, you folks. did a great job. Oh, thank you, guys. But uh, yeah, four hours right. of sleep. You guys. Yeah. yeah. Especially on four hours. Thanks, sleep. Vice Mayor. I didn't have to do anything. I just just uh, turned it all over to Gina. This is great. By the way, the, my ballot is in my email in right now. Mine too. We're better than the LACDP. We ended up. Oh my time. God. Yeah. I think we broke a record. If anyone was on that, the LACDP, Freddie, Freddie hung out and did his speech at two something in the morning. So Freddie, you are the real MVP. Um, but a lot of candidates hung out that long and, and did their, their speeches at 2, 3 in the morning. Um, and we still are not done with endorsements. Um, we still have to run through a, several non-consensus ballot measures. Um, and so we have another meeting coming up on the 22nd. And God help me, I will take over that meeting if they don't get it together. Um, I suggested that they do an election buddy in future elections um, so that we are not uh, there, but thankfully, the only thing that I will thank COVID for is that I did this whole meeting in my bed. And if I was at UTLA, it would have been violent. So, <laughs> um, but I will say that the LACDP staff were in the building, so I feel for them especially. But um, yeah, it was brutal. So, in the name of democracy, one of the reasons one of the reasons we're able to afford. Uh, to send out so many cards is we're saving a lot of money not renting a hall right. every month. Yeah. And not sending out paper newsletters every month. We're saving in postage alone hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And paper. And uh, well over, a th and paper, we're saving the environment well over a thousand a year, uh, um, close to 1500 a year just on rent of the hall. Um, so we're doing well on money and we're doing well on members. We've got a lot of active people. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really happy to see everybody. And Thanks for coming. Are and we have a progressive club. Mm -hmm. are a progressive yes. club. I want to ask a question about the ballot. Why does it say that you can vote for three to seven council members when there's only three seats open? That doesn't make sense. Three to seven? Ooh. It says select up. Two, it doesn't. Three. Three. Oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It says up to three. <laughs> there's there's three up to three yeah. out of the seven that yeah. are that are listed, sorry, sorry. and we listed all the Democrats I mean, that I we knew of. I'd like to make a public shout out to Leah Pressman because she worked really hard to recruit new members, and I feel that's really commendable. It takes a lot of work, but our our club is so much stronger for having new energy, new people, you know, it's very healthy. So thank you so much, Leah. Pressman. Thanks. Yes. Welcome Thanks, to our, our new members. Welcome. She did this without yeah. bribing with cupcakes and donuts, which I usually bring to all the meetings. So that is, a, that is MVP. Yeah, nobody got any free food. Nobody, nobody got, any got free, free food, food or candy. So it's like, you know, she did all that without all the bribes that we usually do. So that is talent. And she's a, she did it during COVID, where you can't really just talk to people as easily. You have to reach out to them in other ways. And, and you know, getting people to follow through and online, pay the money. You know, I've done it in the past, and it, it's, it is good and it's energizing, but it's a lot of work and time. So Leah should get kudos. Oh, wait, Leah, aren't you, a, aren't you a psychiatrist? So you kind of know how to manip like Jedi mind trick people. <laughs>
Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the right. Jedi mind tricks. And she's the CDP delegate. Yes. Yeah. There. Super make you feel? Right. So is Jeff. So is Jeff. And, and so is Dina. Oh. We can't hear you, Tom. We can't hear you. <laughs> hey, you guys, hey. since we're, since uh, we're talking is... about new people and we're just sitting here chatting in the after party, I just want to introduce someone. Uh, it's down there on my screen. He's in the lower right-hand corner. It's Bill Chappelle. Uh, I recruited him. Uh, this is his first ever meeting. Uh, if you look closely, you will see that he has even more gray hair than me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's proof of what he said to me, which is that he has both been volunteering for Democratic candidates and marching in the streets for various progressive caucus causes since JFK was in the White House. And you see the White House in my background there. Well, so Bill, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill. Uh, is very anxious to uh, participate on both the local and global levels. Great. Is that a fair characterization, Bill Chappelle? Mm -hmm. He's three houses away from me at the moment. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Bill. Welcome. 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 Welcome, Will. Also, Will. And both of us, for what it's worth, live in Baldwin Hills, not in Culver City, but we uh, we consider this very much our home club. Oh, he's welcome, of course. And welcome to William. And William Herrera gave such a beautiful talk during his one minute. I was moved to tears. And uh, thank you uh, so much, William, for stepping up as a new member. And Will also gave um, a really nice um, discussion of Proposition 16. So he spoke in favor and that, that can be found on the YouTube channel of the Democratic Club Party. That's uh, right. Uh, from That's last right. It was a very thoughtful presentation. Excellent. Okay, I'm just going to say, oops, sorry. sorry, sorry. You, you oops. Just, oh. <laughs> Love that echo. Sorry, we're. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try this one more time. I just want to say my husband is here, like really shy to put this video on, uh, but he is very thankful to be part of this club, and he is enjoying every minute, and um, he feels very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Good. <laughs> Happy birthday, Maya. Can I say something? Yeah, go, Aifa. Hello, everyone. I'm really, really hopeful with our candidates. I mean, I mean, they are really the creme de la creme. I really think we're going to score well this year. I mean, we have the repeats of Dr. Kent. She's amazing. She's a great human and very smart. I love her family, like my own family. Mm -hmm. I think of all our new candidates. Freddie, I met you twice. You're just you're just such a good, graceful man, Yasmin. I just met you online, and I look forward to you, to to say, you know, Councilwoman Yasmin, and I, Daryl. I hear good things about you, Kinkin. I adore you. I wish you all the best, and uh, I look forward to hearing Rick sing one day after the elections. <laughs> In fact, and Paula, Paula. Oh my goodness, Paula is uh, Paula is the woman who teaches people how to be patient. I remember there was a lot of singing at the picnic uh, year, a couple years ago, 4th of July. Rick, Rick was leading the, the labor songs we were singing there. Yes. We gotta and get Jeff, back to that one of these days. Say, say, somebody, somebody on the chat, chat mentioned not having enough information or needing more, wanting more information about the, um, the cause of this resolution that we voted on. Um, if you you just have to see this video it's it's abominable and it's still up on the Culver City Police Officers Association Facebook page now they've got that out there on Facebook and they give as their as the address as the, their address is the is city property and from city property they're perched right there um, on, on Duquesne they're they're uh, personally attacking um, to, peop to uh, law-abiding taxpayers who were exercising, who just exercised their First Amendment rights, and you got to see it. Uh, there was also, if you Google uh, Culver City uh, Police Officers Association um, 
there will come up a piece about it from the Culver City News. Okay, that's all. Okay, let me say something. Uh, there was a story yesterday, I think, in the New York Times that this is going on all across the country. Yeah. I'm going to put a, a link to it on the, on the website. Um, they did it, where was that in the valley? Or no, way out in the eastern area of California, Southern California, where uh, they were trying to um, make some reforms to the police department and the police union came in and spent so much money, they, they wiped out half the city council. Well, in, oh, Santa Ana, that was, that was one of the examples they used. But this New York Times article is talking about this all across the country. And uh, the point that they were trying to make in the New York Times is, you have to make receiving money from these police organizations a toxic thing for a candidate so that they don't even want it. Um, that they're afraid to take it because they're afraid it will lose them votes. People have to be aware that that's the real, that's what we have to do to support the good politicians is uh, make sure that uh, nobody really wants to take this money because it's going to be a black stain on them. Um, and that they're, you know, they're gonna they're gonna lose for for cozying up to police departments. That's what okay. I think. Time to wrap it up, folks. Mm -hmm. I have to upload that uh, recording on YouTube and uh, then put the chapter. So, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Kareem. Good evening, everyone. Bye.